The leaves have changed color in our nation's capital. The first Saturday in November, we're on campus at Howard University for a key MEAC game. The hottest team in the league is in town, the Florida A&M Rattlers, looking to wrap up an invite to the Celebration Bowl. Howard, hoping to keep their title hopes alive. It's the MEAC College Football Game of the Week on the Sports Fever Television Network. Hi, everybody. Great to see you. I'm Phil Schinner alongside my partner, the czar of the playbook, Emory Hunt. Two of the top offenses in the league, two of the top quarterbacks will be showcased today for FAMU, Ryan Stanley, fifth all-time on the Rattler passing list. And he's a program-changing prospect. He's about 2,000 yards away from breaking Quinn Gray, who is the all-time leading passer at FAMU. And you talk about a guy that since he's gotten on campus, this team has been a different ball club. He is one of the best players in the conference. It started off running back by committee for Howard. No longer Dietrich Parson is the guy. The last three games, close to 300 yards and five touchdowns. That was all done in the last three weeks. Don't let the 5'8", 195-pound frame fool you. This guy is a power runner that also has the ability to hit the home run and make you miss in a fumble. They need him to be big time today against the Rattlers. Fam, you can lock down the MEAC title with a win. Howard wants to keep the door open for the title. It's the Rattlers and the Bison, the MEAC College Football Game of the Week on the Sports Fever Television network kickoff coming up next from washington dc military appreciation day on campus at howard university at green stadium famu has won five straight a win over morgan state last week 38 to three howard three and four and two and two in the MEAC play last week a homecoming loss to south carolina state 27 to 21 but they were without one of their key playmakers and jaquez ezard for an update on ezard let's head out of the field to our third member of our team jeff Dijeski. jeff well thank you phil they do expect jaquez ezard to be out there on the field for howard this afternoon as you mentioned he did not play last week and coach london said earlier this week when you don't have a guy like that that can take the top off of a defense, you really have to change your game plan. And certainly from a production standpoint, that Howard offense isn't quite as scary. Without Ezard on the field, they said he's good to go. He looked pretty good to me warming up earlier this afternoon. And he's going to be ready to get out there and help contribute to this team against FAMU. Thank you, Jeff. Kalen Newton didn't look the same. The Howard go-go offense didn't look the same without Ezard. 31 catches, 779 yards, and eight touchdowns. He was not in the game last week, and that offense looked totally different without him. Well, when you have a guy that's that dynamic and you don't have him in the lineup, now it allows the defense to force coverage over to Kyle Anthony and essentially take him away, and that way they can effectively play the run very well, which is what happened last week when we saw them against South Carolina State. Howard will get the football first to start this game, a key game in the MEAC. Everyone watching this game because FAMU with a win are in the driver's seat to win the MEAC and go to the Celebration Bowl. Should be a fantastic contest. You have strength versus strength battle, defense of FAMU and the offense of Howard. Alley will kick it off for FAMU. To get things underway here in our nation's capital, MEAC football on the Sports Fever Television Network. Kick out of the end zone. Howard will have it at the 25-yard line to get things going. This offense certainly struggled a little bit. They still are number one in just about all the categories in the MEAC. And Kalen Newton has been the guy. Had a tough week last week with a couple of interceptions, but he's glad to have his play back, playmaker back in number 12, Ezard. Of course, Kyle Anthony and Ezard, one and two in the MEAC in receiving. That offensive line has done a good job with protection, and they're getting the running game going now, as we featured before with Diedrich Parsons. There's your starters for the Howard University Bison. First and 10 for the 25 for Kalen Newton. He'll put the football in the air, and it's intercepted. It was batted and then picked off by the FAMU defense. What a play there. Batted away and right into the hands of Mayweather for the interception. It's a lot to unpack on that play. You had a guard fall down when he was trying to pull. They had a wide open receiver deep down the field. Newton missed him, and his it looks like the ball just kind of fell out of his hand and right into the arms. A big number 55 for FAMU. Good job right there by Elijah Watkins, senior out of Brooklyn, New York, picking off that football, just getting their offense set up in a great situation inside the 10-yard, inside the 20-yard line. Yeah, so that was a Watkins, not Mayweather, who had the interception. And it looked like it was the way it came out. It looked like it might have been batted, but it wasn't. Kalen Newton just kind of went to throw the football and fell out of his hand. So FAMU in scoring opportunity. 
here to get things going. The run by Bon Down close to the goal line, that was Smith. Xavier Smith coming across. Let's take a look at this FAMU offense led by Ryan Stanley. Sean Smith, their leading running back. They'll also see a little bit of Bishop Bonnet. And Chad Hunter is their top wide receiver. Number three in the MEAC, 35 catches. And this offensive line has done a great job of protecting Ryan Stanley. Put up big time numbers this year offensively. So FAMU in a situation with a first and goal from the two yard line running the Wildcat. And they keep it up the middle as Ray gets close to the goal line, but a good job by Howard's defense to make sure Ray couldn't get any further. Got back to the line of scrimmage. Maya lost a yard to bring up a second and goal from the three coming up for the FAMU offense. Let's take a look at the Howard defense. They're ranked last in the league against the rush. Get a lot of their play from their linebackers. Allison, one of the guys who's been very big this season, 47 tackles. And then in the secondary, led by Brian Cook, who's made some big plays, 40 tackles. Had an interception for a touchdown in the Morgan State game. FAMU is on the board with the touchdown. The short three-yard touchdown by Ray, the sophomore, in the end zone for his first, for his fifth rushing touchdown of the season. And FAMU strikes first. They take advantage of the Kalen Newton interception, and they get points on the board. Nothing really special right there on that play. Just a simple inside read, power play, one back power, quarterback power. And Azende Ray, again, the sophomore out of Florida, did a great job in just punching in for the end zone. And the Rattlers strike first. They take the first bite, a 7 0 lead over Howard, taking advantage of the turnover. In Washington, D.C., partly cloudy skies and a high of 57. Good day for MEAC football inside Green State. FAMU, and they have traveled from Tallahassee to the game today. And a three-play, 15-yard drive after Kalen Newton's 12th interception of the season. Ray with a three-yard touchdown. Bam, you definitely travel as well, don't they? When you look at this, this football team, you talk about the progress that they've made over the last couple of years, just building on top of success, uh, successful recruiting classes. And it's been excellent for them, and they've gotten off to a great start in this ballgame. So FAMU will kick the ball again away to Howard. The 7-0 lead. Last week against South Carolina State, it was the same kind of slow start. South Carolina State was uh, able to take advantage of the early turnovers by Howard last week. Let's take a look at the starting defense for the Rattlers, who made that big play. Coming up with the interception, Watkins from that defensive end position. The linebackers are very good as well. Richardson, 60 tackles, 7.5 tackles for a loss. The secondary has made some big plays. Jackson, 27 tackles on an interception, also a fumble recovery for some points. And this is a 3-3-5 defense, so it puts a ton of pressure on the perimeter game in which we saw in the first play of the game on the last series. So the handoff straight ahead to Parson, across the 40-yard line and down to the 42. So Parson has taken advantage of himself as the key runner. Now, great story from him from Philadelphia, Emotep Charter. He was a walk-on and has emerged as the guy to get it done as far as the running game is concerned. He's had an awesome last three weeks with five touchdowns in the last three weeks. Second and three after the seven-yard run. Ali on the reverse, here he comes. He has the first down and more across midfield in the FAMU territory and knocked out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Ali, you see his speed and explosion. Yeah, these teams are, are mirroring one another and as far as the talent is concerned because Jordan Ali is listed as a running back, but he has receiver-like speed and they need to utilize him in the backfield to slot all over the formation. You saw right there on that particular play, getting outside and, and creating a chunk play for this Bison offense. First and 10 from the 38. Newton fires, looking for Anthony. Anthony comes down with the catch. One official says catch, but then the side judge says no, incomplete. Hit off the turf, looking for Kyle Anthony at the 20-yard line, but it's incomplete. That's a time play right there by Herman Jackson by the 75 did a great job in fighting for that football more than Kyle Anthony did on that play. And that's how you get inside of that big receiver and bat the ball away. 
So second and 10 for Newton and the Howard offense. Down 7 0 early. Far side has the completion. Ali shy of the 30 yard line. Orlando McKinley, the senior defensive back, had a chance at the interception there. He went straight for the tackle, uh, but that ball kind of hung up there a little bit too long. Had he saw the football, he could have been going the other way for the Rattlers. Ali's 11th catch now of the season. Looked like FAMU jump. Kellen Newton will take advantage of the free play. Using it with his legs, looking downfield. Goes to Ali and incomplete. Out of bounds, but it looked like FAMU jumped across. So smart of Newton to try to take advantage of that free opportunity. Very smart play by Newton right there. Realizing that these guys jumped offside. Try to get his receivers to fight, find position, find open grass, and therefore get delivered the football. But still made it something out of nothing. That was just a good job by him. So the penalty marker. On FAMU will give the Bison a first down from the 26, trying to answer the FAMU touchdown when they took advantage of the interception by Newton. Parson still on his feet. Good first down run by Dietrich Parson. The sophomore from Philadelphia, Emo Tep. Coach is very proud of him coming on as a walk-on and Really establishing himself. Joshua Crute was one of the guys they looked to to run the football, but he was injured, so then it was running back by committee, and Parson has emerged as the guy. Newton to pass. Corner of the end zone looking for Ezard. One-handed catch! Ho-ho! To Kez Ezard. Welcome back. The one-hander for the touchdown. Outstanding throw. Outstanding reception right there by the Howard Bison offense. That's probably the best throw Kalen Newton has made in the last couple of games. And what a great job by Ezard using his free arm to keep the distance away from the defensive back and reaching out with his forehand to go out there and make the one-handed reception. Outstanding play all around. Ezard's ninth touchdown of the season. Howard going for two. Incomplete in the end zone. The two-point conversion, no good. He had a one-handed catch about uh, from at the Bethune-Cookman game that got him on SportsCenter's top ten. This one might be another top tenner. What a catch by Ezard. Football on the Sports Fever Television Network. What a catch it was by Jaquez Ezard, the 22-yard touchdown, the one-hander. Six play, 65-yard drive, took 2.06 off the clock. Newton to Ezard. They're glad to have him back. Missed last week in the homecoming loss to South Carolina State because of injury. Newton now with 17 touchdown passes on the season. And that's Ezard's ninth touchdown of the year and his 32nd catch. What a heck of a catch it was, too, man. Wow. It was kind of like the Bethune-Cookman one-hander that he had in Indianapolis, which gave him a top-10 play on SportsCenter. It might be going that way again. Fam, you will get the football back. See what they could do offensively. Smith on the return. Across the 20, and that's where Ryan Stanley will have things. At short field, was able to take advantage of it with the touchdown. Their second opportunity offensively. The Delta Hotels by Marriott, Baltimore, Hunt Valley, Maryland, and Mid-Atlantic Region Lodging Headquarters destination for visiting college football teams and fans. It's right off of Interstate 83. The Delta Hotels by Marriott, Baltimore's Hunt Valley, has everything you need and more. Call today or book online for a reservation. 11.27 to go. 7-6 our score. FAMU with the lead in the football. Staley looking to pass for the first time today. Has the completion to Williams. There's a lot of speed on both sides of the ball on the perimeter here in this ball game, which is why I love this matchup. You see Ryan Stanley getting outside the pocket, completing a pass in the flat to Marcus Williams. But this offense really has to take its time because when you look at the way Howard can, can apply pressure, it's going to come from that second level. Williams has 21 catches now in the season, but the go-to guy is Chad Hunter. Number 84, they like to get him the football. Bonnet was tackled from behind. 
They like Bishop Bonnet, but he wasn't able to get to the outside. Good job by the Howard defense containing him from behind. Yeah, Greg Hoy did a great job slowing down that outside run. You talk about a tough guy to bring down. If Bonnet hits that corner, he is off to the races. One thing about the running backs, they're not that big a size-wise. Bonnet's 5'6". Smith is about 5'8". And Henry Liss is about 5'10". Listen, you can't hit what you can't catch, can't hurt what you can't touch. Put it on a T-shirt. <laughs> We're going to sell it. These are the playbooks quote. That's his favorite one, third and seven. Passing situation, the ball off to Ray's chest and almost intercepted. It hit Ray right in the chest after being deflected, and it was almost a Howard interception. My old coach used to say, a play doesn't care who makes it, it just wants to be made. Just a great job defensively jumping into that passing window and taking away that option for Stanley. That's an excellent stop right there by Howard's defense, getting off the field on third down, forcing the three and out. Howard trailing 7-6. They gave FAMU a great opportunity with the short field to start the game after Kalen Newton. The ball fell out of his hand. And that's going to be offsides on FAMU. Yes, on fourth down. It's not the Arena League. You can't get that running start or the CFL. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit too early right there for the for the gunner. Prior to the snap, phone store, kick your team, number 11. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. And Troy Singleton, our official today, leading this crew. Find MEAC officials. Chris Fadulo remains one of the top punters in the FCS and MEAC. Averages about 47.7 yards per punt. We'll get an opportunity here to punt it away to the Bison. The ball takes a bounce, picked up at the 25-yard line, and returned out to the 40-yard line. Boyd on the return. 15-yard return by Boyd. And Howard will have the football back after their impressive drive and the Ezard one-handed catch. They trail, go, went for two, weren't able to make the two-point conversion and trail at 7-6 in this key MEAC game. Without question, Florida A&M has really surprised a lot of folks. I think they were picked like fifth in the beginning of the season, and here they are on a five-game winning streak, sitting atop the only undefeated team in the conference in conference play. Parson up to the 45-yard line and a pickup of five yards, second and five coming up for the Bison. This has been a good pace of the football game for both offenses. And when I talked to Coach Brennan Marion, the offensive coordinator for Howard before the game, he talked about controlling the pace of the game and wanted to dictate what they do defensively by how he operates his offense. Give to Parson again, his fourth carry of the afternoon. He gets two yards, maybe three, before he was stopped. A third and short coming up for the Howard Bison. It's a heck of a tackle, tackle in speech right there by Elijah Daniels. We've called his name a couple times in his broadcast, and that's one tough thing to do against this Howard offense is make stops one-on-one -on -one in space, especially against a back like Parsons that has that great ankle flexion that you talk about during draft time of being able to make a guy miss. Best in third downs in the MEAC is Howard. Good ball fake by Newton, has the first down and more in the FAMU territory, still running down to the 25-yard line. Oh, what a run there by Kalen Newton for the first down in the Rattler territory. Love what he did there on the option, attacking downhill, drawing that guy up, faking the pitch, and having clear lane to take off. 24-yard pickup by Kalen Newton. The go-go offense is going quick. Iggy Reynoso with the carry up the middle. Decent first down run, pickup of four. Take a look at Newton going for 24 with that little ball fake. See, when you attack downhill on the option, it forces guys to commit to you. Then you fake the pitch, then you get him to fly out the way, and now you have a clear lane to pick up a chunk play for this offense. Renoso, three to second and seven, 8.30 to go first quarter. Newton lies downfield, fires, corner of the end zone to Anthony. The ball goes out of the back corner of the end zone, incomplete. Anthony was the target. Anthony with four touchdowns this season, leads the MEAC in catches with 39. No one is more happier to have a receiver than Kyle Anthony because Ezra takes away a lot of double coverage away from Anthony, which gives him these opportunities to make those one-on-one -on -one plays. But again, this is a guy that has 6'3", 219, big-time physical receiver that can play inside or out. Third and seven, 40% on third downs this year for Howard. The completion to Anthony in the first down inside the 10-yard line. And that is Kyle Anthony's 40th catch of this season. And good enough for a Bison first and goal. Love the temperament of Anthony. He doesn't care if he's over the middle of the field, seeing a linebacker or safety 
put a bead on him. He's going to make that reception, hold the football, and pick up the first. Parson tackled in the backfield for a two-yard loss. The Rattlers' defense there to shut down Parson very quickly. Big 91, Crutchfield, 27 tackles, and that's his 10th and a half tackle for a loss. 6'2", 220, the redshirt sophomore from Lake Worth, Florida. They are so fast up front for big guys. They're extremely quick, athletic, and they beat you a lot of times with their speed up front, destroying your rushing lanes. Second and goal from the 11. Newton. Option pitch to Parson. Parson at the five, gets hit in the end zone. Touchdown, Diedrich Parson, his sixth touchdown of the season. Sometimes great plays are nullified by greater plays, and Bam, you play great defense right there in defending the option, but just a greater play made by Kalen Newton and Diedrich Parson right there. You see the pitch, late pitch, but it was accurate. Parson was able to haul it in, and once he gets out in space, it's very tough to bring him down. Eight-play, 60-yard drive to off the clock. Dietrich Parson, 11-yard touchdown. Howard's going for two. Newton going to run, looking for the end zone. Has it in the two-point conversion. And the Bison with a 14-7 lead over FAMU. And there's a page out of his brother's book, the celebration by Kalen Newton. Here's the pitch. Parson. He's the leading rusher for Howard and showing it here today. It's a 14-7 game. Douglas Hall on campus at Howard University. Gorgeous Saturday, first Saturday in November, and a big game in the MEAC. The leading team in the MEAC undefeated in league play, FAMU trailing by a touchdown after Howard won eight plays and 60 yards. Dietrich Parson with an 11-yard touchdown run. Short kick recovered by FAMU. Let's head down to the field. Jeff Dijewski. Jeff? Thank you, Phil. Coach London earlier this week preached getting off to a fast start. Obviously, last week that play, and they did not get off to a fast start. And he said, if you do that at home, it takes the crowd out of the game. It can put your back against the wall. He said, when you play an aggressive team like Florida A&M, you have to dive right in. There's no just sticking the toe in. And after that early turnover, they've come back aggressive, and they've taken the lead here, Phil. 14-7 lead for Howard. Great crowd on the visiting side. FAMU travels very, very well. They're number two in the FCS in attendance. They average like 14, 15, 16,000 people down in Tallahassee. Give straight ahead to Smith. Smith running hard into Bison territory before he was run out of bounds. Smith is their guy they love. You know, at one time, Smith was Mr. Florida. That goes to the top high school football player in the state. And he found his way to FAMU, and they're glad to have him. Deshaun Smith, 5'9", 195 pounds, 420 yards rushing on the season. And has really emerged. Had a big week last week against Morgan State, 116 yards and a touchdown in the win over the Bears. First and 10 from midfield. Stanley looks, fires sideline completion to Williams. 11 yard pickup and a first down for the Rattlers, Stanley to Williams. They love that bench route right there at the number 80. They're doing a great job in allowing him to get downfield. Marcus Williams runs a great route and keeping his feet in bound to make that reception. So FAMU's starting to find some success with chunk plays on his drive. Williams second catch of the game. First and 10 from the 38. Stanley again. Quick hitter, incomplete. At the 30-yard line. Was looking for Chad Hunter, number three receiver in the all of the MEAC and the leading receiver on this FAMU team. This is a big FAMU offensive line, and they are also athletic. These are guys that can move left and right as well as they can go downhill. So the protection is going to be there. You want to see Stanley start to settle down a little bit and find targets consistently going down the field in between the hash marks. Look at Brian Cook. A sophomore who's played big the last couple of weeks for the Howard defense. Second and 10. Stanley, plenty of time to throw. Going to go towards the end zone. Has a man wide open, but overthrew Williams. That would have been six. But Stanley's pass, a little too far. Williams was open. 
three things that I just talked about. Stanley settling down, the offensive line giving him protection, and finding a deep shot over the middle of the field in between the hashes. All were perfect right there. Just got to connect on that throw. Great job by Brian Cook to catch up and make that a very tough uh, reception attempt. Better thrown ball, though, probably would have been six. Would have been a touchdown. Third and ten from the 38. Let's see if Stanley can bounce back. He's been very, very good this season. Stanley looking right side, now fires across the middle, has the completion, and the first down for FAMU. Throwing in traffic, and the big catch there by Smith. Sometimes you'd rather be lucky than good. I don't know how that football got it between three Bison defenders, but heck of a job right there by the receiver just making that reception, keeping his eye on the ball. And you saw how it was surrounding the receiver, and no one got their hand up to bat that ball away. Big number 59, the linebacker, Garrett Reeves, was the closest. That was Stanley's probably his third look on that, getting the ball, that big completion. First and ten for the Rattlers. The pitch to Smith around the right side. Gets a couple of yards there before he was run out of bounds. Both these offenses are, are two sides of the same coin. They both do a lot of window dressing with formation, personnel grouping. They have a lot of speed to get to the perimeter. They have excellent options at receiver and two phenomenal quarterbacks. So I'm not surprised to see the offenses going up and down the field on these two defenses. Second and nine from the 21. Both these offenses, one and two in the MEAC, and the defenses have struggled a little bit both sides. The runs there by Smith. Gets a couple. Bring up a third and manageable now for FAMU. Well, here's where the offensive line protection comes into play and why it's a benefit for FAMU because you have time back there if you're Ryan Stanley to scan your options. Now you just need your receivers to beat one-on-one -on -one coverage, make plays, find yourself open, and receive the football. 39% on third downs this season. That's number two in the MEAC for this Rattler offense. Third and six from the 18. Stanley with the pass to Smith out of the backfield. Great job by the Howard defense. Only gains a yard or two. Fourth down coming up for the Rattlers. They were not fooled at all by getting the ball to Smith out of the backfield. They did did a great job right there beating him to the spot and meeting him at the perimeter that wasn't set up properly uh, by stanley you want to see him wait a little bit allow those line to get downfield and get those blocks but just a great job by howard defense just rallying to the football playing great team defense and forcing this field goal attempt ali 12 of 17 on field goals this year 34 yarder the kick is up and the kick is good Ali solid for the top kickers in the MEAC. Gets the Rattlers on the board, but they trail 14 to 10. Florida AMU, a Rattler crowd traveling up to the nation's capital. Their team got on the board with a nine play, 16 yard drive. Ali with the 34 yard field goal. It's a 14 10. Howard lead. Coming up next week, the MEAC game of the week. We'll be in Baltimore, Maryland. Delaware State taking on the Bison next week, 1 o'clock on the Sports Fever Television Network. If you want more MEAC football, it's a MEAC doubleheader on the Sports Fever Television Network coming up today at 4 o'clock. Bethune Cookman and Morgan State. Check your local listings for that one, but Emory will be at Baltimore next week to see Morgan State and Delaware State in our MEAC College Football Game of the Week next Saturday. But a doubleheader day of MEAC football on the Sports Fever Television Network after this game at 4 o'clock. Bethune Cookman and Morgan State. Carson with the carry. Picks up three yards on the first down carry. Yeah, one of the keys for Fam you and this series right here is to play better contained defense you see right there good job setting the edge forcing the running back to go back inside where all your help is and that's how you make the stop they can't continue to allow newton to get to the outside otherwise they're going to find themselves giving up big plays second and seven newton to pass that's the completion to the 45 yard line a great job right there by Malik Height, the tight end. We don't normally see the tight end get action in this go-go offense, but a great job. Nice arrow route right there. Nice over-the-shoulder reception as well. Height's third catch of the season. Kyle Anthony open. 
Makes the catch. Is the first down in the Rattler territory. Stopped and started. Wanted to go for more. There's a penalty marker down at the 41-yard line after the Kyle Anthony run and catch. On the defense, penalty is declined. We got that a play. First down. That's where the tempo starts to give you a problem if you're Florida A&M because Howard gets to the line of scrimmage so quickly that you're trying to sub guys and now you have these infractions. 26-yard pickup, Newton to Anthony on that pass play. First and 10. Spin move by Newton. Brought down to the 27-yard line. I tell you what, man, Florida A&M's defense is out here hitting today. They're pretty aggressive. And they're one of the better ones in the conference. You see right here just flying up and just laying a pop on Newton. But this offensive line of Howard is starting to find some success. They're starting to find ways to, to get guys off the spot. You see them starting to get movement up front. Newton 5 of 8. One touchdown, one interception for 86 yards. A big second and 8 for him. Eyes downfield. Throws this one away. Down to the Howard sideline. Closest receiver was number four, Iggy Renoso. This is the growth you're seeing in Kalen Newton. We've seen him force passes before, but in this ball game, he's done a great job taking what the defense has given him. If it's not there, he's thrown the football away or he's tucked it and run with it. So we've seen growth from him over the last couple of weeks, and this is just a, a positive sign for this offense. Third and eight coming up for Howard. Perfect three and three on third downs. Completion to Ezard. Looks like he has enough for a first down. So four for four on third down so far here in the first quarter for the Howard Bison and Ezard's second catch of the game after missing last week because of the injury. If you're playing great situational football, you're going to win a lot of games. And right now, if you, from what you just mentioned, perfect on third down. That's why they're up in this ball game. And they're looking for more. No so, not much there on the first down run. We'll bring up a second down. After the short run by Reynoso. It's a lot of depth in the backfield for Howard, man. They can hit you in waves with their backfield depth. Talk more about that depth. Give the ball to Parson on the carry. Picks up a couple, bring up a third down coming up for the Howard Bison. They've been so good here on third downs in this first quarter. 120 clock ticking here in quarter number one. As Jeff talked about that slow start last week in the homecoming game against South Carolina State for Howard. The Bison much more productive here. Going to the end zone for this touchdown throw. And what another great catch, great throw. And that is Kyle Anthony coming up with the catch. What a beautiful throw by Newton. Anthony uses his height. 6-3, comes up and makes the grab. The back corner of the end zone, touchdown Bison. Yeah, there's a difference between being tall and playing tall. You saw an example of both right there. Anthony went up high to make that reception, getting his foot in bounds. And that's what you want to see from a big time wide receiver. You want to see him take advantage of these opportunities. A lot of the coverage now is being drawn to Ezard, and Anthony has become the direct beneficiary of it. Looks like a different team here for Coach London. And this go go offense putting up 21 first quarter points. Craving Pizza Declaration is your go to neighborhood pizza shop. Use only the highest. Quality ingredients. Declaration provides guests with the best gourmet pizza you're going to find anywhere. Gluten-free, vegetarian, meat lovers. Declaration meets all your pizza needs along with delicious salads and starters. Join them for weekday lunch or a Sunday brunch or dinner or happy hour Monday through Sunday. Declaration is located 804 V Street, Northwest, just a few blocks from the Howard University campus. Here's what's interesting about this game. Fam, you had the advantage from the first play and you've seen Howard just kind of take control because they're doing a solid job on defense. Offensively, they can't be stopped so far in this ball game. There's been no resistance. So even with the mistake on the opening play, they haven't faltered. They've been able to rebound, and, and now they have themselves a 21-10 lead. Howard's playmakers making plays. Newton now with 18 touchdown passes. Kyle Anthony with his fifth touchdown grab of the season. 
21-10 lead for Howard over the top team in the MIAC. FAMU trying to get the return. Marcus Williams. Williams up to the 40-yard line. So a 26-yard return by Marcus Williams. Williams has had a busy first half, man. He's had a lot of receptions. See right here, making guys miss. One guy down, bang, bang. Another guy down, bang, hang, make him miss too. So he's doing a lot of negotiating through traffic right there on that kickoff return. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter. FAMU came into this game on a five-game win streak. They're perfect 5-0 and in MEAC play. Could lock down the conference title with a win here today. So a lot to play for. But right now, Howard with a 21-10 first quarter lead. Stanley out of the backfield, gets it to Smith. And Smith is running room into Howard territory. And a first down. 20-yard pass play from Stanley to Smith. Now, I'm not going to be biased because I'm from New Orleans and from the South, but there's a different level of speed in the South as it is, as it is up North. And Florida A&M has that speed that I'm talking about. It's amazing, and all the guys on the Florida a and most of them are from Florida. That state has so much speed because not only do you have FAMU, you have all the other colleges. You have Florida State, you have Florida, you have Miami, you have now the other schools are catching up U.S., you know, uh, University of Central Florida, South Florida. West Florida was in a Division II championship yeah, game I last mean, year. How much talent is in the state of Florida, Emory? How much speed is in that state? First and 10 from the 40. Stanley completion to Ray. Ray has 12 yards and another FAMU first down. So you see this offense able to move the football very quickly. I like how they utilize the Zende Ray in their offense. They line him up at quarterback, utilize him in the backfield. You see right here outside on the perimeter making plays in space. So he's their move piece in their offense. That's the final play of the first quarter. Very entertaining first quarter. A key MEAC showdown. Howard with a 21-10 lead over the Rattlers. But FAMU is driving. We'll be back with the second quarter on the Sports Fever Television Network. On campus at Howard University. End of one quarter with the Bison. 21-10 lead over Florida A&M. Phil Shaner alongside the czar of the playbook, Emory Hunt. Jeff Kuzeski down on the sidelines. 200 yards of total offense in the first quarter for Howard compared to 68 total yards of offense for the Rattlers of FAMU. FAMU, though, first and 10 from the 25-yard line in Bison territory. Stanley fires. Ball is batted in the air and intercepted. Ball is picked off by Freeland. Ty Freeland has had back-to-back -back big weeks. We talked, we talked at Norgin last week about how many plays he's made on defense on both ends. And today he's coming up with a big-time interception off a rifle shot coming from Ryan Stanley that just ricocheted off the receiver. And Freeland was Johnny on the spot just like he's supposed to be as a free safety to make the interception. Freeland's second interception of the season. Stanley's seventh pick he's thrown this year. So now the turnovers are evening out. Although Kalen Newton had that ball fly out of his hand to start the game, and fam, you turned that into points. Now the Howard defense coming up with a turnover, and they turn it into points. You don't want to lose possessions to a team like Howard that has <laughs> affectionately named the go-go offense. This team can put up points in bunches and quickly. Newton, the pitch. Spin by Parson. Stop for a short game. This is a tough sequence of plays right there for FAMU. FAMU, this is a warning. No distance associated with it. First time I want it. And Troy Singleton, our official today. Sideline warning on the Rattlers. Second down for the Bison. Newton looking for Ezard. Incomplete over his head. I was just amazed how different the offense looked last week while number 12, Jaquez Ezard, was on the sidelines and wasn't available. It just wasn't the same go-go offense that we were used to. And South Carolina, to their credit, took advantage of that. Well, it went from a passing offense to a running offense. We saw that. They tried to run the football last week 
because it wasn't able to expand the defense with the two receiving options because one was out uh, with injury. But when you have a, a talented backfield like they do, try to play to your strengths. Perfect on third downs this game. And they're going to stay perfect. The 11-yard pickup and the catch by Gillespie. Gillespie had the touchdown last week when that offense needed a big play. Gillespie had the big touchdown to make it a 27-21 game a week ago against South Carolina State. Now Howard 6-for-6 six six on third downs. Parson. There's a bunch of Rattlers on his back. He was able to pick up two yards. Mayweather, the linebacker, 53 tackles, tied for ninth in the MEAC. And number 52 is going to be all over the place for the Rattler defense. Alignment, assignment, execution. That's how you play defense. That's the three keys right there. You saw all of that on display on that one right there for, for FAMU. Spin move by Parson. Gets two, and that's it. It's a big third down uh, coming up here for FAMU. They have to get a stop. You can't allow a team to continue to sustain drives and, and be perfect on third downs if you're trying to win the EAC championship. Six for six on third downs today for the Howard Bison. This third down coming up for Kalen Newton. FAMU showing some pressure. Kalen looks over to the sidelines to get the play, the play that he wants. Renoso and Parsons lined up next to him. Hazard comes up and catches the bubble screen. Doesn't go for much. And FAMU's defense was able to make the stop on the pass to Ezard. It's a great job right there by FAMU, but store that play away because you saw them go with a quick screen with the running back coming out to lead block. Later on in the ball game, that running back is going to leak out down the rail and be wide open. So great stop here by FAMU, but they have to be cognizant of what's going to go on later on in this ball game. This is a great job by the Rattlers defense to rally up, make the stop, and get off the field. So fourth down and five from the 29, and Howard will punt the football. Chad Hunter is waiting for the punt for FAMU at the 35-yard line. Ball goes over the punters, out of his hands, still gets the punt off somehow and kicks it out of bounds. We'll step aside with 12.14 to go. FAMU has good field position when we get back. In MEAC football on the Sports Fever television network. Sophomore punter Isaiah Moore unable to handle that punt and was fortunate enough to get it off. A great field position for the Rattlers and their fans are liking it. On the far sideline, the team trails 21-10. Penalty marker before the play. It's going to be a penalty on FAMU. Prior to the snap, phone star, offense, number 70. Five-yard penalty, first down. Coach so, Willie Simmons right there. Willinium has this program heading in the right direction. Absolutely, no question. First year for Coach Willie Simmons from Tallahassee, previously head coach at Prairie View A&M. Played college football at Clemson in the Citadel. Bishop Bonnet on the run. I tell you what, man. If you allow Bishop Bonnet, the sophomore tailback out of Jacksonville, Florida, Reigns High School, very famous high school, I might add, to get any sliver of space, it's going to be a house call. This guy is a tremendous tailback for the Rattlers. There's three rushing touchdowns this season. Second and eight. Bonnet again gets a little closer in the third and three coming up for FAMU. The run game is starting to pop for the Rattlers. You want to see them continue to try to beat this drum as far as wearing down the defensive front seven of Howard if they want to continue to have some success. Again, this offensive line for FAMU is really good on both ends of offense, and we've seen it on display in this ball game. Had a great rushing week last week as a team, 216 yards in the win over Morgan State. Third and three. Bonnet, very close to the first down, but not going to get it. Fourth down, good job by the Howard defense, a fourth and about one and a half coming up. Bonnet was short of that first down marker. 
Coach Simmons thinking about going for it here. I don't blame him when you have the success you've had so far in this drive of running the football. And, and at this juncture of the ball game, 21 to 10, you, you need seven to knock off power. Alley has a 34-yard field goal in the first quarter, but they're going for it. 67% on fourth downs. They're number one in the MEAC when they do go for it. Fourth and two for FAMU. First down run by Bishop Bonnet. Got four yards. He only needed two. Got maybe four or five and a first down for FAMU, who's now five of nine on fourth downs this season. Here's why size is not a skill, because if you're good enough, you're big enough. When we talk about a guy that's 560, he has tremendous center of gravity. He's low to the ground, so he's able to make those cuts quickly and change direction and get downhill. That helped him get that first down in that situation. Run again to Bonnet. It's across the 20 yard line down to the 18. So we've seen Howard go from a passing offense to a running offense last week. Now they flipped that. In this game, we've seen FAMU go from a passing offense to a running offense as well on this drive. So they're starting to ride the hot hand. And right now their ground game is popping. Four yard pickup by Bonnet, second and six from the 18. For FAMU, trailing 21-10. Kalen Newton, two touchdowns, one to Ezard, one to Anthony. Dietrich Parson also has a touchdown run for the Bison. Quick pass, incomplete, thrown behind Xavier Smith was the attended retarget. And that's more on Smith than it is on Stanley. Stanley expected him to sit down in that void that was vacated when the back went out in the flat. Yeah, there was a huge window right here. Back goes out in the flat right there. Settle, settle down. Yep. And he kept going. He's about to run himself into coverage as opposed to staying right there wide open uh, in the zone. Chad Hunter, the leading receiver for FAMU, does not have a catch yet today. Watch for him, number 84. Out of the backfield, they get it to Bonnet. And whistles blow and stop the play. Are they going to say that was incomplete, or what was the whistle? I guess they said maybe Bonnet didn't catch it, and it hit the turf. The ball hit the ground. Mr. Singleton tells us that it was an incomplete. Let's take a look here. Good call. Good call. Good job by these officials here today. They've been great today. They've been great all the time we've had them on. We said that in jest because we were just talking before the game with the official news. Talking about how, you know, we, we tend to rag on officials, but in all good good fun, good jokes. and But they do a fantastic job. They have a lot of things they got to see out there on the field. 35-yard attempt by Ali. It's 13 of 18 on field goals. And the kick is no good. A rare miss by Ali. 8.57 to go, second quarter. The Bison with a 21-10 lead over FAMU. Um, yeah. Not us, bud. A little help you can see. Google Assistant, now on Spartus List. Beautiful fall afternoon. Howard University inside Green Stadium. Winds kick in about 16 miles an hour out of the northwest. Bison have the football. Newton on the run. Picks up five yards on the first down run. Bring up a second and five. Let's head down to the field. Jeff Zajewski. Jeff? Well, Phil, a missed field goal is certainly an adversity for this FAMU team. And talking to Coach Simmons earlier this week, he said, we've had to overcome adversity all year. That's been what we've preached to this team, to overcome stress and adversity. And he said, not only negative adversity, we have to overcome positive adversity as well. On this winning streak, it's a lot of added pressure, a lot of added people in your corner, those pats on the back. He said, we can't accept those until we complete our ultimate goal of winning a MEAC championship. Eight years since their last MEAC championship for Coach Simmons. Injured player down. Let's take a look how uh, Blake Simpson was injured. There you see 21 trying to tackle Newton. And the injury there. Newton looks downfield. There's a penalty marker down. And incomplete. In and out of the hands of Hyatt. Going to get a hole back there in the pocket. Hyatt should have caught that one, though, at the 45. But... Wouldn't matter anyway with the holding penalty by the Howard offensive line. 
We'll see how long Elijah Daniels is out. The guy just went out with the injury. He's been a big player for this Rattler defense so far in this game. Two fouls on the play, both by the offense. Holding, offense number 70, that penalty is declined. You got chop block, offense number 73, number 31. Penalty being forced half the distance, replayed it down. James Holloman on that chop block, and they'll take that penalty. So two penalties on that offensive line. Well, you know they call that chop block on the, on the center and the tailback because it's probably a high-low block. They're going to catch that every time. Defense coming up big and that play did very disruptive the Rattlers D Coming to play here on this series. So would you say the Rattlers striking on defense? I would think so <laughs> But this is great team defense right there again playing a perimeter is about beating the offensive player to the spot When you're beating pulling linemen to the spot, you're gonna win every time they did it right there on that particular play Richardson make that stop for the Rattler D Third and a long way. Ezard wide open, and Newton overthrew him at midfield. Ezard had some space, but Newton's pass was a little too far over Ezard's head, or that would have been a touchdown. The reason why he had that much space, because he put a move on the defensive back. He worked them over, spun him around, put him in a spin cycle, and found himself wide open, created that three-yard separation. Newton just put a little bit too much air on it and overthrew him. But you see right there, he's wide open, but just missed him, but the route he ran right there was outstanding. Bison punting out of their own end zone. Last time the punt was mishandled and it turned out to a great opportunity for FAMU. Rattlers on the return. Good job in coverage by the Howard Special Teams. Cambria Hotel is a proud sponsor of Howard University Athletics. The hotel is closest to the university and offers a discount lodging rate for all Howard University events. For the preferred rate, please visit the Howard Athletics site, click on the logo, or call the hotel directly at 202-299-1188 Cambria Hotel. That's one right there where... A sportsman-like conduct, receiving team number 25. 15 yards, first down. Going right there on that return where the coaches to tell you just to fall forward, man. Don't don't try to do too much. You're losing yards. They would have had to, had the football at the 50 yard line, obviously before the penalty. But just catch football and go forward. So the penalty moves FAMU back. See what they can do here with 7:38 to go, trailing 21-10. Their, their defense certainly did the job. Explosive first quarter offensively for the Howard Bison offense. The Rattlers settle down defensively there. Now they turn it ball back to their offense to see what Ryan Stanley, the guys, can do. Sean Smith in the first down carry. Picks up five yards, bring a second and five after the Smith run. We haven't called Zamone Robinson's name at all today defensively for Howard. He's one of their... They're better linebackers, a guy that can make a play in space. You see right here, just good job right there by Ty Field and the safety once again, squaring up against the back one-on-one -on -one in the hole and making a stop. Second and four, they gave Smith six yards on the first down run. Back to Smith. Moves the pile across the 35-yard line down to the 37. Third and short coming up. FAMU is trying to establish the fact that they can play any type of game necessary to win a ball game. We know they can throw the football, but the last two series, we've seen them just rely on their running game and try to wear down his defense because, number one, it's a great strategy, and two, it keeps Howard's offense off the field. 6.30 to go here in the second quarter. Give to Smith, has the first down and more, breaks a tackle across the 45-yard line and down to the 46. 
And that moves the sticks. First down for Florida A&M. A lot of these runs are starting to pop in between the tackle to tackle box. So when, when that happens, you're getting great one on one blocks from your guards and your center. They're doing a great job of controlling the line of scrimmage, moving Howard off the spot. And there's cracks in this defense where the backs are just finding lanes and exploiting them. So after the 10 yard run, first and 10 from the 46 for FAMU. Stanley to throw. Has the completion to Chad Hunter, the top receiver on the team with his first catch of the day. Into Howard Bison territory at the 49 yard line on that first down pass play, Stanley to Hunter. That was Anthony Jones, the tight end, 6'6, 250 out of New Orleans. Oh, excuse me, you got me there. 80, yeah, 89. Big body guy. I was about to say, if <laughs> if Hunter's running that slow, we got a problem. Yeah, Hunter's a little quicker, but he doesn't have a catch <laughs> today. So second and five. Quick hitter, first down. Now you see the tempo being picked up by this FAMU offense, getting things going, and the completion there to Ray. Ray's made some big plays so far for this FAMU offense. Yeah, he's dangerous with the ball in his hands, and you understand why they utilize him in a multitude of ways right there. They want to get him the football quickly. And then he just turns to a running back, and he's able to power through tacklers and also make guys miss in the open field. First and 10. Rattlers in the Bison 36-yard line. Stanley to Ray, the completion. Ray, run after catch. Touchdown! Fumbles the football and then falls on it for the score. What a run by Ray, 36-yard touchdown. And all that was on Ray, and now he looks like he's injured. He lost the football as he crossed in the end zone and then was able to recover it. And now Ray is the injured player after that 36-yard Stanley to Ray touchdown. Heck of a job right there by Ray making that first guy miss and just outrunning guys at the end zone. Great block on the perimeter. You see him fumble that football and fight to get that recovery. You, hurt, you, you hate to see him injured. I think it may be a shoulder. Look what Ty Freeland was doing. He was trying to uh, pr provide a Brian Cook-type play. That happened in the Morgan State game where he was able to knock it out of bounds, but when he was unable to, freed it up, but Ray was able to fall on it. Now he is the injured player after scoring the 36-yard touchdown on the Stanley to Ray completion. So we saw Freeling make a, make a play like that. We saw Cook a couple of weeks ago make a play like that against Oregon. All that credit goes to defensive backs coach Raza Dowling, who played at Virginia, played in the NFL for a while. That's excellent coaching. Guys are not giving up on the play defensively and giving their themselves a chance to create a turnover. And it just so happens that <laughs> Ray was able to recover that football. Otherwise, it would have been a touchback and another great defensive hustle play for Howard. Six play, 58-yard drive, took 303, took 308 off the clock. Stanley to Ray, 35-yard touchdown. Four thirty to go. Howard with a 21-16 lead over FAMU. We'll be back with more from Green Stadium in Washington. Touchdown of the season. Went to Ray, 35-yard touchdown. And the extra point. Head of FAMU. Tempo certainly picked up offensively. Let's see why they're the number two ranked offense in the MIAC. The extra point, Ali is up and good. It's 21-17. 4.30 to go before the half. Keep the ball moving down the field requires planning, strength, and dedication as one of the United Van Lines premier agency groups, Hildro, knows a thing or two about moving. If you're moving your home or your office, you can count on the team at Hildro to get where you need to be safely and efficiently. To learn more about Hildrup, how they can help your next move and receive a free estimate, visit them, hildrup.com. Hildrup, proud supporter of Howard Bison Athletics. A lot going on here at Howard University next week. Volleyball championships in the MEAC will be held here in Washington, D.C. on campus at Howard University. Military Appreciation Day today. 
the unbeaten in conference play. FAMU Rattlers in town. Bison with a 21-17 lead for Howard's very quick and explosive first quarter. FAMU has settled down defensively. I think defensively, that was key the way they played uh, in the last defensive stand to get the ball back to their offense. And if you their running game to help out their defense by allowing them to stay on the sideline and get coached up a little bit more to be able to get these stops against Howard. Now, if you're Howard, your offense has been on the side for a while. See what they have dialed up here with less than five minutes to go in the ball and sorry, in, in half. Ali on the return. Tackle down at the 23 yard line. Don't forget, coming up next week. MEAC Game of the Week will take us to Baltimore, Maryland. Maryland, Morgan State hosting Delaware State. That's coming up next Saturday, 1 o'clock on the Sports Fever Television Network. Don't forget, though, is a MEAC doubleheader day today coming up at 4 o'clock on the Sports Fever Television Network. Bethune Cookman taking on Morgan State at 4 o'clock on the Sports Fever Television Network. Coach Terry Sims making a trip up to Baltimore with his Bethune Cookman Wildcats. Newton. Keeps it himself. Tackled high and out of bounds after a nine yard run by Kalen Newton. Bring up a second and short for the Bison. Angles are everything where you're trying to chase the away run. You talk about Elijah Daniels doing a great job. He took a bad angle initially, but was able to catch up and was able to grab Newton before he was able to pick up more yards. But initially that, that was a bad angle. He was able to, to overcome that and chase him down. Got enough for the first down. Newton, after the 10-yard run, looking for more. This time picks up five yards and goes out of bounds. Second down on the way for the Bison. Watch number 52 right there on the edge, Derek Mayweather, and watch what I'm talking about when he's saying don't over-pursue or, or make sure you protect the edge. He was able to fly up the field but got too far inside, which allowed Newton to bounce outside and pick up that game. Parson. It's a yard, yard and a half. A couple of scores around the MEAC today. Norfolk State has a 17-14 lead over North Carolina A&T. That's with 8.24 to go second quarter. North Carolina Central, 7-0 lead over Edward Waters playing out of conference. Coming up later, Savannah State and Delaware State. And then on the Sports Fever Television Network at 4 o'clock, Bethune Cookman and Morgan State. Newton pointing downfield and firing deep. Looking for Ali, an incomplete down at the 20-yard line. Great coverage there by Mc or or Orland McKinley. Newton thought he had a free play right there because the nose guard jumped offside, but he stayed parallel to the line of scrimmage, didn't cross over. And so Newton was trying to go deep down the field, take the home run ball. See right there, 93 jumped offside, allegedly, but good job by Newton recognizing that. The refs didn't see it that way. He tried to take the home run shot. Solid job by FAMU getting off the field once again. Moore back to punt. He had one punt that was a good snap and went through his hands that gave FAMU great field position. Fourth and three from the 39. So FAMU's defense doing the job in back-to-back -back series. Howard's going to take a timeout with 3.02 to go before the half. We'll step aside as well. 21-17, Coach London squad. On top. And the unconditional satisfaction guarantee. Dickies Flex, engineered to move. Learn more at Dickies.com. In MEAC football on the Sports Fever Television Network. Direct snap on the punt. And the Howard Bison fourth down gamble pays off. Oh, those tricky Bison. Oh, the direct snap to Lewis and Lewis. Gets the run right back to Lewis here instead of going to Moore. And there goes Lewis. Open field. Nothing but open field. Good job by the Howard special teams and their coaching staff to recognize that they had an opportunity there to keep the football. It's a great job. right? Great coaching move right there by Howard. First and 10 now for the Bison on Rattler territory at the 45. Newton slips. Nearly slips down. Stays on his feet. Penalty markers down. Newton runs. For a two-yard gain, and that play could have turned out to be really bad. Newton almost slipped on the turf. We'll have to wait to see what the penalty is about. 73, 10-yard penalty. We play first down. James Holman called for the holding penalty. You see it right there in the middle of the screen, the holding call. 
And Holman is a big center, man. You talk about a guy that's 6'6", 350. You don't see centers that big, but he's that agile, and that speaks volumes to his athleticism. Two-time all Miak Player of the Week a couple of times this season. First down run goes for a couple for Parson. Yeah, when you have a center, you want a guy that's normally shorter, smaller, quicker, a little bit more agile. When you have a bigger center that's able to do all of the things that the smaller center can do, your entire offense opens up completely, especially from a running game perspective. Second and 18, 145 to go before the half. Newton has the completion. But still some yards to gain. Completion to Anthony. Like that second down throw right there by Newton over the middle of the field in between traffic, but right where it needed to be accurately in between the numbers for Kyle Anthony. Anthony has four catches on the day, including a touchdown in the first quarter. Third and eight. Bison have been great today on third downs. Incomplete looking for Ezer. Short of him and fourth down coming up. Got to give the Rattlers defense credit for taking away Ezard in this ball game. Outside of the fantastic one-handed touchdown reception, he hasn't been a factor, and they're going for it here on fourth down. Howard now six of nine on third down, so let's see what they can do here on this fourth down. Fourth and eight. The FAMU 43. One minute to go. Newton will punt it. Ball rolls down at the five-yard line and will be touched at the two. Rolls down between the one and the two-yard line is where it will be touched down, and that's where FAMU will have the football with 50 seconds to go. Newton has punted a couple of times this year. He punted a lot more last year as a freshman. He did that quite often for the Howard Bison. He was excellent there that, to down that football inside the two-yard line, uh, inside the one, actually. Yeah. That's fantastic. They rolled past the one. It's between the one and the goal line there. So FAMU's going to have to go 99 yards with 50 seconds to go if they want an opportunity to score here before the end of the first half. If you're punter Isaiah Moore, you're kind of looking at Newton like, hey, man. <laughs> FAMU's going to want to get some space. Stanley standing in the end zone. Bishop next to him. Give to Bishop. Has a hole to run through. Has the room they wanted. Runs outside. And gets up close to the 10-yard line. Well, if you're Howard, you can't get beat deep. So you're going to give up plays like this on the ground and short underneath the routes. You're just trying to get to halftime. But you can't allow yourself to get beat deep down the field. So safeties just stay deeper than the deepest man and let everything happen in front of you. That's why you see three guys back deep for Howard defensively. Second and short. Stanley. He's going to run. Has the first down and gets out of bounds at the 16-yard line with 40 seconds to go before halftime. You got to give defensive coordinator Vince Brown some credit for this game plan in the first half. I know FAMU has had some success running the football, but the passing game, they, they've slowly taken that away from the Rattlers and made them beat them with the running game. So it's a great job by Vince Brown defensively. And what a job Cook has done on Chad Hunter, their top receiver, doesn't have a catch so far today. Cook's been dealing with him. Now Hunter has a catch. Middle of the field of the 35-yard line, and Chad Hunter's 36 catches season first of the day. Now you can start getting into your regular offense if you're fan you as the clock starting to run. 26 seconds to go and fan you calls timeout. So the Rattlers started the season one and two lost back to back losses to Troy University and Jackson State. Then the win streak started with wins over Savannah State, North Carolina Central, Norfolk State. State, North Carolina A&T, and last week Morgan State. There's Chad Hunter's first catch of the day. That Jackson State loss was a turning point for their season because that's a game they had won, and he should have won. 18-16 loss. And the way they lost it with uh, you know, a mishap at the end of the game, 
when he had the football it is I know Rattler fans don't want to hear more about that game but that probably was a turning point that sparked this this five game consistent streak that you're seeing from family they're doing a great job playing on both sides of the ball on both ends their, their pass rush has been there their run defense has been excellent offensive offensively the passing game and running game has also popped as well they've been the shock of the MIAC they had him pick fifth currently undefeated the completion to Smith Bison territory at the 41. Yeah, it was a great throw by Stanley. With 39. 15 seconds to go and a timeout. Well, see, these are the same situations that happen against Jackson State where you get the first down. Great throw by Stanley. First of all, we'll see that on a replay right here. Then I get back to my point. But rifling it over the middle of the field. Just a great confidence throw right there by Stanley. From the end zone cam, you see it perfectly coming right into your living room. Just an excellent throw and catch. But when you have that situation with the clock running, they set the ball, they start the clock. Right there, if you can't get down the field fast enough to get set, just call timeout. Don't try to get set and have guys going in motion and then call timeout because you just lost combined in two plays. We saw them lose at least 10 seconds of valuable takes on the clock. FAMU with one timeout to go. 13.6 seconds remain. First and 10 from the 39. For Stanley. This Rattlers down 21-17. On the road here in the nation's capital. Stanley, pressure. Still on his feet, takes a hit, loses his helmet. And down he goes. They held Stanley up. He got away from one tackle, and then he took a vicious hit where he lost his helmet. You see the long hair of Ryan Stanley after that helmet-jarring tackle. That one right there is on Stanley where you got to understand the, the down and distance in the situation, and you can't take that hit. You can't take that sack right there. If no one's open, just throw the football away and let the play another down. They were coming hard. Especially when you had a timeout left. There was no need to, to take that sack and take that long making that decision. Isaiah Flood was uh, coming after him and then they, they finished him off. So now his five seconds remain before the half. And a second and 19. Of course, there's a lot of teams like North Carolina A&T and looking at this game that you know, North Carolina and A&T has got to be the biggest Howard fan because they want, you know, they want FAMU to, to have a loss. Of course, head to head, the tiebreaker goes to FAMU. Coach London saying he did not call a timeout. They're going to hold that off now, and I, I think we're going to get back to football here with five seconds to go as you see Coach London's reaction. I never call timeout. <laughs> I love what Coach London has done with this program, man. He's re-energized this fan base in this program, this proud historic program. No timeout on the field. Mm -hmm. We're on the play before. Quarterback is legal. Coach London, first year last year, turned the program around seven and four. Had their first winning season in a while. The completion to Hunter and the tackle made immediately. And that'll do it for the end of the first half. Howard Bison with a 21-17 first half lead over the MEAC's top team. Florida AM Rattlers. And we'll check in with Coach London down on the sidelines with Jeff. Go ahead, Jeff. Coach, three, your first four possessions, touchdowns. What do you have to do to get back to that offensively? Well, just got to make sure we maintain our poise, uh, playing against a good team, number one in the MEAC right now. So um, the explosive plays helped at the beginning. We've got to make sure we maintain the poise to allow us to take some shots downfield, get Ezra one-on-one again, and uh, 
and then you'll play defense. I mean, we've been our defense has been playing pretty decent considering the field position they've been in. And you mentioned earlier in the teleconference this week how difficult of an opponent this is. You know, what adjustments from this first half do you want to take into the second half to ensure a win? Well, you know that they have explosive plays and players themselves, and so we just had to be cognizant of what we're asking our guys to do, and also be smart because it's getting a little chippy out there. We don't need to get involved in any, uh, you know, anything that will cause penalties, but just play hard, play our game. All right, coach. Thanks for your time. All right, thank you. After 200 first quarter yards, Howard will only 68 here in the second quarter. The yardage is starting to even out, 268 to 248, and the score evening out as well. Howard with a 21-17 lead at the half. I Howard University. It is a MEAC doubleheader on the Sports Fever Television Network. We're at the half of Washington, D.C. with the Howard Bison with a 21-17 lead over Florida A&M. Coming up at 4 o'clock, Morgan State, Bethune-Cookman. Jeff Jeske is down on the field with a special guest here at halftime. Jeff? Thank you, Phil. I'm joined by Howard's Associate Athletic Director of External Operations, Ariel Germain. Ariel, the first thing, tell our, our, our viewers just exactly what External Operations is and what your title ensues. So External Operations is a combination of marketing, fundraising, media relations, corporate sponsorships, but anything that showcases our athletic department in the best way we can do. And we have a great event upcoming, the first time Howard's hosting the MEAC Volleyball Championships. Talk about everything that's gone into the planning of that to the execution coming up in a few weeks. Okay, so working with our, our volleyball coaches, our conference office, um, my staff, just making sure that we're hosting and preparing for teams to come, um, facility management, marketing, tickets, um, making websites and for those for those teams, and we actually work a lot with our MEAC office. And while all that's going on, you have new seasons upcoming here in the winter, women's basketball, men's basketball, all of that getting underway here in the upcoming weeks. What goes into a new season? So right now we call this crossover season because we still have our fall sports that are going on right now. Now, but we're preparing for men's women's basketball. We have our first women's basketball, I'm sorry, men's basketball game on Wednesday um, against Washington Adventists, and our women will be in LaSalle in Philadelphia. So it's a lot of kind of crossover and trying to strategically market each school, each program, so they're able to get as much coverage as possible. Final question I have for you. Speaking of sports still going on, uh, a win in soccer last night into the championship. You know, as, as that season goes on, you know, what goes into the extra games, those extra playoff and uh, conference championship games? So we play in the SWAT conference, um, which is based out of Lower South in Alabama. And so for us, it's working with the SWAC and making sure that we're more so showcasing their wins. Um, so they defeated Texas Southern last night. Um, they go on to play Grambling, I believe, today. And so once they get that championship, it's getting ready for postseason play and making sure everybody knows what's going on with them and sharing their successes. Well, thank you so much for your time. Uh, certainly a great university to help out and show off those athletic teams. Thank you so much. Phil, go ahead back up to you. Thank you so much. We're at the half. Howard with a 21-17 lead over the number one team in the MEAC, Florida A&M. We'll be back with more of our halftime show on the Sports Fever Television Network. Be limp-worthy. Goodyear, more driven. We are at the half at Howard. Howard with a 21-17 lead over Florida A&M. A couple of quick scores around the MEAC. North Carolina A&T has a 21-17 lead over Norfolk State. Delaware State up 3-0 after one quarter against Savannah State. North Carolina Central up 14-0 with 3.18 to go in the first quarter over Edward Waters. And our second game on the Sports Fever Television Network doubleheader today coming up at 4 o'clock, Bethune-Cookman at Morgan State. Let's head down to the field to Jeff Dijewski. Jeff? Thank you, Phil. Another great guest joining me down here on the field for Howard, the associate or Assistant Athletic Director of Cor Corporate Partnerships, Tiana Williams. Tiana, you know, just tell us about what your role in the department is of cor Corporate Partnerships in the Athletic Department. Well, Corporate Partnerships is definitely a new area that we're tackling this year. Um, definitely going to different businesses in the DMV area to make sure that we cultivate the DC and Howard relationships. But in addition to that, everybody wants to market and to advertise on Howard's campus, so now I'm giving them opportunities to do so. A perfect example is our VIP tent that we have this year. Every week we've had a different corporate sponsor that has wanted to basically advertise and market their brand for such a strong, strong brand as Howard. Speaking of opportunities to get that, that corporate sponsorship out there, hosting the MEAC Volleyball Championships here in a few weeks, so how has that gone in the lead up? 
um, that's something that I'm very proud of just because, especially with us having the championship for the next three years, Kipton Hotels has graciously been the host hotel for us and is um, sponsoring the volleyball championship. So Kipton Glover Park and Kipton Carlisle right here in D.C. You know, and Ariel mentioned it being crossover season with new sports about to begin here in the winter while the fall sports get to their conclusion. You know, what's that time like now getting ready for basketball season? Busy, busy, but we love every minute of it. A uh, big part of my job is also ticketing and fan engagement. So I, it brings me straight joy just to see the people from football getting excited about volleyball and now pushing that into basketball season has been amazing. So um, we're just looking forward to the home openers this, uh, this week. Men's basketball on Wednesday and women's basketball on Friday. Well, we certainly appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you. Phil? Thank you, Jeff, so much. And we thank Howard for their partnership with Sports Fever Television Network. We're at the half. The Bison up 21-17. Second half coming up. Fever Television Network. Back to Green Stadium at the half. Howard Bison with a 21-17 lead. Let's take a look at how we got to this point halfway through this first half of this MEAC contest. Kellen Newton start off a little rough. Loses the football, and it was picked off by Elijah Watkins. Led to a Ray three-yard touchdown run, and it was 7-0 FAMU just a couple minutes into the game. But then Newton finds Sequez Ezzard with a one-handed catch. Diedrich Parsons, 11-yard run on the pitch from Newton, and it was 14-7. Howard with the lead. And Ali had a 34-yard field goal for FAMU. It's a 14-10 game. A 12-yard touchdown. Anthony. Anthony goes up to get that one. 21-10. And then that's where we stand, 21-17 at the half. Let's take a look at the first half stats. Emery, your thoughts as we see the stats here for the first half. Fairly even game, quite honestly. I know the rushing yards pale in comparison to what Howard has done, but remember, sack yardage is included in the rushing yards. So they've been fairly even right down the middle from turnovers to penalties. This is why this is a very I mean, even from the quarterback perspective, Ryan Stanley, 12 out of 18, 180 yards in a touchdown. Kayla Newton, 10 out of 19, 130 yards, two touchdowns. Both guys have thrown an interception. So fairly even across the board. Should be a phenomenal second half. Can't wait for the second half. That's coming up next on the Sports Fever Television Network. The Bison, 21-17 lead over the Rattlers. You can't look away. Getting ready for our second half. MEAC football on the Sports Fever Television Network. Some of the 21-17 lead. Howard coming off a loss at homecoming last week to South Carolina State. Who hasn't felt a loss in a long time? They're riding a five-game win streak and an opportunity to clinch the MEAC championship and an invitation to the Celebration Bowl, which will be in Atlanta, Georgia, against the winner of the SWAC. It'll be the fourth consecutive season of the Air Force Celebration Bowl. Last year, North Carolina A&T State defeated Grambling State in an outstanding 21-14 game at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. I've been to all three Celebration Bowls, even the one last year with Grambling and A&T. That was a great defensive battle. This, if FAMU is able to go and they get matched up against the Southern Jaguars, that game, attendance-wise, will probably be amongst the best of all bowl games outside of the, uh, the, the New Year's Six Bowls. Because that matchup between those two programs, I'm not forecasting in this ball game or not predicting, but I'm just saying, if those two meet in that bowl game, attendance records will be set. I believe it because FAMU, they, they brought a huge crowd here today to Green State. Coming in. Big crowd here at the visiting sidelines. If huge crowds uh, down in Tallahassee for their home games. Last season, the Bison had a 10 point deficit knocked off FAMU 37 to 26 down at Bragg Stadium. And that was in front of over 17,000 fans. That's a season since 2012 for Howard with that win. Kim, Kellen Newton had a big game in that a year ago, but FAMU leads the series 28 to 10, dating back to 1933. That was the first meeting between these two schools. Second half is underway. 
taken from the 10. On the return is Smith. Smith up to the 40-yard line. 30-yard return, and let's head down to the field to Jeff Jezeski. Jeff? Guys, I just saw Willie Simmons a few moments ago, and he said after those three straight touchdown drives from Howard, the defense really started to settle down. He said, we know they have a lot of talent, but we have a lot of talent as well. We just had to settle down, match up the way we wanted to. And on offense, he said, if we could get back to running the football, that'll open up some things in the passing game. Said, we had some success running. We need to get some more running the football here in the second half, Phil. Thank, thank you, Jeff. Thoughts of Coach Simmons, who yeah, definitely their defense played a lot better in that second quarter. They had uh, two or three key stops where he got the ball back to their offense. It's because their offense hasn't been able to, to sustain drives because of their ground game. First and 10 from the 39. Stanley has the pass across midfield. Hit White. White, big target out of the backfield, makes the grab. And now into Bison territory with first and 10 on the 43 after the completion to White. He's their tight end, Vero White, 6'2", 255 out of Sneeds, Florida. It's a big boy going over the middle of the field. Better use two arms tackling him. Stanley incomplete, looking to Smith. Short pass. Stanley Smith incompletion, second down. On the way for FAMU. When you look at Howard's defense, and we talk about the second level, their linebackers are lengthy, they're athletic, and they cover a lot of ground. So I'm expecting to see those guys step up in the second half and start to make some plays to, to really slow down his Rattler offense. Stanley 13 of 20, 198 yards. Sends White in motion. And give to Smith. Gains a couple and a third down coming up after the run by Smith. Good job right there by linebacker David Hudson, the senior out of New Rochelle, New York. Because if he doesn't make that tackle, it'll be a house call. And there's a injured player down on the field for FAMU. And we'll step aside and come back. We're just underway. Second half, Bison lead it 21 17. Just the injured player up off his own power. We're ready to go here third and four. The Rattlers. Smith has the first down and more down the sidelines and knocked out of bounds at the 24-yard line. This is coming back. They didn't have a lot of two offensive linemen were off into the backfield, wasn't on the line of scrimmage. So I'm betting that would be the the penalty here because it came right as the balls were snapped. Penalty on the FAMU sideline. That's where the penalty marker is down. The legal formation. Five-yard penalty. Replay third down. Pressure, Newton gets out of it. Anthony with the completion. Whistle, they say he was down at the 29-yard line. What an unbelievable job by Kalen Newton to extend the play, and then the fifth grab of the game for Kyle Anthony. All kinds of effort right there by Kalen Newton, evading two defenders and throwing the strike to Kyle Anthony for the first down. So first and 10 for the to the to 29 yard line after that completion from Newton to Anthony. Tight man coverage across the board on the perimeter. Newton has time looking. Has the completion to Ali and a nine yard pickup. Newton to Ali. Well, that's the first time we saw Howard's offensive line give Newton some time back there in the pocket, and he was able to go through not one, not two, not three, but four different progressions 
and find Ali going across the middle of the field, uh, you know, for the first down. But again, that offensive line is starting to find its rhythm here in the second half. Ali's first catch of the game. Nine yard completion. Second and one. Newton keeps it himself, pulls it out of Parsons' belly and gets the first down. Newton with a six-yard pickup after keeping it himself. It's up to the 44-yard 10 for the Bison. Newton is one strong football player, man. You see him just power through just different tacklers, and this is a guy that's a quarterback, but he's running through linemen and linebackers. Impressive display of strength here by Kayla Newton. Penalty marker came out after the play was over. And this is what Coach London talked about at halftime, the chippiness of this ball game. He wants his team to stay focused, stay in the game mentally, and not get these cheap penalties or draw these penalties. Look at Coach London. Second year as the head coach here at Howard. They need to win today to try to make it back-to-back -back winning seasons. Disqualified. 15 automatic Didn't catch the number that co at, uh, 55. And Andre that's Singleton said so. Number 55, that's Watkins. That's a huge loss. The defensive end, he had the interception to start the game if it was 55. Got to keep your head in the game, man. You can't be the reason why you cost your team. And you see Coach Simmons telling that, like, it doesn't matter. Just don't do things to get kicked out of the game. Wow, that is a major loss. 13 tackles, has an interception to start this game, and now Watkins has been ejected from the game for Coach Simmons and the Rattlers here at the 10-15 mark of the third quarter. You don't want to lose your starting defensive end. First and 10 for the Bison, FAMU territory at the 41. Newton looking for Ezard, incomplete. They've tried that deep over route at least four times in this ball game, and FAMU has been on it each and every time. They've done a great job of, of bracketing Ezzard so that way he doesn't have that free reign to the back pylon. So Newton is trying to get the football to his top playmaker, but FAMU is just doing a great job of squeezing that route and taking it away. Ezzard three catches, 35 yards, and the one-handed touchdown grab. Ezzard was the first player in school history to have back-to-back -back three touchdown games earlier this season. Ollie with the catch. Third down and Three coming up, third or three, third or two on the way for Howard, who's been very good on third downs here today. When the Rattlers go laxed on defense as far as backing off these receivers, Newton has done a great job in finding them and getting the football out quickly. Third and two. Parson has the first down up to the 25-yard line. That moves the chains. And then Dietrich Parson, as we talk from our open of this game today. He's the go-to guy now running the football. At first it was committee the first couple of games, but they established their guy, and Parson gets it again. But not much there. A good job by the Rattlers defense. Is that something that you want to do as a, you know, you're not sure who your guy is, so they did running back by committee. Do you prefer different guys running, or do you have, you need that one guy that he knows he's the guy, he's going to be the featured back? Well, that's a great question because I think it, a lot of times it depends. If you have guys like they do, you kind of want all of them to touch the football, but if you have one guy that's just, that's sort of getting better with each and every carry, that's the type of player that you want to feature and get him the football a little bit more, but if you have the depth of talent that you have in the backfield, get everybody the football. A two-yard loss, so a second and 12. Newton's intercepted the ball was picked off. Looked like Newton might have been hit as he threw it, and the ball is intercepted as Newton throws his second interception of the game. Watless uh, Theophile did a great job coming off the edge right there, the defensive back. He got there just a tad bit before Newton was able to throw. You're going to see him come off the edge, defensive back pressure, and knocking his arm Ooh, yep. to force that ball to go high. So great effort play right there by Theophile, just a, another freshman, another young player making a play for this Rattler defense. That's a huge stop for FAMU. And Derek Mayweather with the interception, his first of the season. Six foot, 225, the sophomore from Fort Worth, Texas, the linebacker with the pick for Coach Simmons' team. 13 interceptions down the season by Newton. Smith. 
runs for maybe a yard, and that's it. That play worked earlier in the first quarter, but Howard able to shut down Xavier Smith. It's tough to run east and west against this Howard Bison defense. You see right there, number 40. We talked about his, age, his name earlier, Zamone Robinson. Just stringing out that run, getting in good football position, playing with his, 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 his uh, gap responsibility and not allowing him to bounce it outside and waiting for his help to come there and, make, and clean up the mess. Second and nine now for the Rattlers. Penalty marker down on the Bishop Bonnet run. Have to wait on the flag. C56 upset. That's <laughs> Brian Crawford, the redshirt freshman. Hold it. Offense, 56. After distance, replay second down. So it is on Crawford, the center. You see him right there, got his hands on the outside. And it's tough for a lineman because when you have your hands in good position and the defensive lineman either moves left or right or falls down, it looks like a hold. But I can understand why the refs would call it there. His hands were outside and he had a grasp of the shoulder pad. Second and 16. Stanley gets the completion to Smith up to the original line of scrimmage. Let's head down to the field for an injury update. Jeff Zajewski, Jeff. Oh, guys, Zende Ray hurt his wrist on that first half touchdown catch. He has just came back into the game. I saw him playing catch on the sideline during the first, FA, or first FAMU drive of the second half. He's back in. Andre Regis, the offensive lineman who went down on the last drive, was getting that left leg stretched out, walking it off, and getting hydrated. You have to assume he was cramping up. They need Ray back. Three catches, 64 yards in that 35-yard touchdown in that first half. So Ray would be a big addition to the FAMU offense. Going down the field, an incomplete looking for Ray. Good defensive play to knock it away. Ray was trying to get open at the 45-yard line, but well defended. You may not want to throw the football where you have a one-on-three disadvantage. There were three defensive backs around Ray, who's just back in the ball game coming off of an injury, and you go to him as opposed to going outside to a more favorable matchup. That right there, and they see Coach Simmons talking to them about that. That was a miss by Ryan Stanley. You got to take the best option available in the passing game, not throw it into triple coverage. Revis was in on that play, knock it away from Ray. Fadul to punt the football away. The ball was tipped by the Howard Bison. It'll be great field position for the Bison when we get back. Howard with a 21-17 lead and good field position when we return. A lot to cheer about for the Bison, the cheerleading squad. Howard has a 21-17 lead over Florida A&M. There's a whistle before the play. Great field starting field position. First and 10 from the FAMU 31 for the Bison offense. I don't think the refs were ready there. And he, who wanted to, to get out the way first before they snapped the football. Kalen Newton, two first half touchdowns. 18 touchdowns now in the season. Iggy Reynoso running right side. Picks up three on the first down carry. Second and seven on the way for Howard. It's a big drive right here for the Howard Bison. The feeling is that if you can put a touchdown on the board, it puts a lot of strain on that FAMU offense. And the way the defense has played coming out of the half, that's a good chance for success if you're Howard. Second down. Newton looks to Parsons, doesn't throw it. There's a penalty marker down and throws the football away. He had Parsons open out of the backfield, opted not to go to him, and then have to wait to see what the penalty is about in the middle of the field. You got to trust Parson one on one in space in that in that situation. Man. And they're clapping. It looks like it's going to be on FAMU. Howard Bison players clapping after talking to the officials. So, so it could be another penalty on the Rattlers. First of the fall, hands to the face, defense number 93. Half the distance, automatic, first down. Take a look at the hands of the face coming in on number 96. Flowers, you can see it there, maybe. Right there it is. 
Some costly penalties by Coach Simmons' Rattlers. Undisciplined play, man. You have to remain disciplined if you want to be a champion. That's the difference between champions and co-champions or not champions. You've got to be disciplined. Newton looks for Anthony, who gets hit hard, incomplete, down at the three-yard line. Goes for an incomplete pass, looking for Kyle Anthony, who got sandwiched by Man. two Rattlers. He took that hit high. Take a look at it on the replay here, Emmer. Don't ever question the toughness of Kyle Anthony. That ball was a little bit behind him, but he was able to go up with confidence and, and extend out to make that reception. You got to put it a little bit in front of him, but never question the, the confidence of big number 81, man. Richardson hit the stinging hit. Parson still on his feet, fighting towards the goal line and gets knocked out of bounds at the one yard line. Dietrich Parson looking for his second touchdown of the day. Falls just one yard short. It'll be a first and goal for the Bison. He's so good, man. If he doesn't make all conference, I'm going to be highly disappointed. This guy has put together a fantastic sophomore campaign coming out of Philadelphia. Newton keeps it himself for the quarterback sneak short of the goal line. Parson a walk-on from Philadelphia, Emotep Charter. Played some quarterback in high school at Emotep. Walk-on here at Howard has established himself as the go-to back for this Howard Bison team. I'm disappointed you missed an opportunity to say go-to back in the go-go offense. How <laughs> disappointed do you feel? Well, I figure we get it around next time. So you don't want to use everything right away because you never know when you're going to need it. <laughs> Second and goal for Newton. Bison looking to increase their 21-17 lead to the top team in the MEAC. Newton spins, and he is tackled, brought down in the backfield. Richardson was there to drag him down. Great job by the FAMU defense, making it difficult here on the short yardage. It's all about staying assignment sound right there on the option. You saw two guys defending the pitch and quarterback. And, uh, and on that play, Newton has done a great job this game playing the option, but that one right there, he overthought the situation, which created the loss. Newton will keep it himself, and he's going to be short. Second effort, tried to get in, but down at the one-yard line. Just short of the end zone. Newton pulled it away from Parson, kept it himself. Now he got fourth and short, and he wants to go for it. And FAMU is bringing big boys right there, getting some girth along that defensive front. This is going to be big, and FAMU is going to need a timeout because they didn't have their personnel on the field. They were trying to get the big nasties up there, timeout. and they had to call timeout. So we have a fourth and goal coming up. Here's the look at the last run by Newton. Watch his second effort, keeping those legs going. Driving that pile towards the goal line. There you see him sneaking through and across, but I don't know, a whistle may have blown at some point. But it looked like his second effort might have got him in the end zone. The fact that he got through that mess right there just speaks volumes of the strength that he has as a football player. Wouldn't like a, would you, would you, you know, play action here work? I mean, fake the handoff up the middle. You have those wide receivers to cover. I mean, what are you going to do here with a fourth and goal? Coach Marion, the offensive coordinator, talking to his offense. What are you going to call here? Fourth and goal from your one, and you've been stopped the last couple of times here on short yardage when you tried to, you know, run the ball up the middle. I am jumping in the back pocket of James Holman, the 6'6", 350-pound center, and just expecting him to get movement off the spot. FAMU isn't as tough up front as you see Howard is. I'm throwing the fade to Anthony. That's a good choice. Newton over the top, in for the score. Touchdown, Howard. Newton up over his center. They went with Emery's play. And got six. Well, I mean, Newton did the right thing because everyone is expecting him to go through the offensive line. But when you have everybody on defense expecting that and trying to dive at the ankles of the linemen, just go over top. You're right there at the foot, at the, <laughs> the foot yard line. They have another flag right there on the field. The legal substitution on the defense, half the distance, try. 
So the extra point coming up for Howard after the one yard fourth and goal sneak by Kalen Newton. Howard lining up to go for two. Now they're going to kick the extra point as Joseph is on to kick the extra point for the Bison after the quarterback sneak on a fourth and goal by Newton. The extra point is up and good. The Howard Bison now with a 28-17 lead. The one-yard quarterback keeper on a fourth down by Kalen Newton. The Bison lead at 28-17. Yourself. Olga mailed herself back to Russia. No one is coming. Howard with our first score of the second half. Eight play, 31-yard drive, took 246 off the clock. Kalen Newton, the one-yard touchdown quarterback keeper on a fourth and goal. A 28-17 lead for the Bison. FAMU on the return. Stanley. There's a penalty marker down. The return up to the 45-yard line, and the penalty marker down at the 40. You said it before, and Coach London said it. Chippy play between these two teams. We've seen that here in the third quarter. And it's going to affect a lot of what these guys do on, on the field because, again, you can't keep backing your own self up. The legal block in the back, number 28, return team. 10-yard penalty, first down. One player ejected. Watkins was rejected. Delta Hotels by Marriott, Baltimore's Hunt Valley, the Maryland and Mid-Atlantic Region Lodging Headquarters destination for visiting college football teams and fans right off of Interstate 83. Delta Hotels by Marriott, Baltimore's Hunt Valley. If everything you need, call today. Book online your reservation. I was at the Delta Hotels last night, Hunt Valley, and it was packed. They had three weddings, a couple of conventions. The hotel was hopping last night. Go without Brian Cook on this play here as he didn't work on his ankle on the sideline. First and ten for FAMU. Hand off to Smith. Smith has 13 yards and a first down. You talk about Howard's backs. FAMU has a stable of backs as well. Guys with speed, shiftiness, they're all built about the same way. So therefore, you don't lose anything when you're subbing guys in and out. And they're able to get that ground game going. I like what they're doing on the ground here today running the football. Smith with a very quiet 70 yards on the ground rushing today. Stanley incomplete in and out of the hands of Chad Hunter. Those you have to make. Those are the type of plays and, and catches that you expect the receiver to make. Those are routine. That right there is supposed to be second and five now because that's how you keep your offense on pace. But now you back up your own offense, make it second and long. If you're Howard, now you could start to turn up the pressure a little bit more because of that missed opportunity on first down. Hunter doesn't drop many. He has 37 catches leading the way for FAMU. Stanley goes right back to Hunter, who has the grab. Very close to the first down. Watch the athleticism here about Hunter because he had to stop on the dime, turn completely around, and make that reception. Outstanding display of athleticism by the receiver right here on the replay. You see him just pivot back around and make that catch. And besides all that, knew exactly where he needed to get for that first down. Good that, awareness right yeah, there. Good enough for the first down. Eyed it up. It looked like he might have been short, but he knew exactly where he needed to get. The first down for the Rattlers. Stanley pump fake now goes to the air. And looking for Hunter. And incomplete. Good coverage. It's a great job right there defensively. When you know the route that's coming you find yourself in great position to, to cut it off and that's exactly what happened in the secondary for Howard Hunter's their top playmaker 37 catches on the season six touchdowns last week had a touchdown grab in the win over Morgan State Cook looks done for the day he has his shoulder pads off he has his ankle propped up on the side that's a huge loss because Cook did an outstanding job on Hunter in the first half Hunter was quiet. To witness protection. Second and ten. Stanley was going to toss the ball out. A little shovel pass to Bonnet, but falls short. Third down coming up. Third and ten. 
for FAMU. Now these are the type of down and distances where if you're FAMU, you have to find ways to convert. The offensive line protection-wise has been great all game long, but they have to really hold up here and get the first. And there's a look at Cook, injured on the sidelines. Three of ten on third downs for Florida a and If you're Howard here, you're just guarding the sticks, not allowing them to get that first down. Hand it to Smith. Smith gets a couple, but a fourth down coming up. That was a four down call right there, because if you're going to go for it on fourth down, you're going to try to get at least half of it on third. And that was evident right there by the draw play. See them bringing in their big tight end. Number 30, Beryl White, the freshman out of Sneeze, Florida. One for two on fourth downs. Fourth and six from the 43. For Ryan Stanley. Redshirt junior quarterback. Incomplete, looking for Hunter. Great coverage. And Howard gets the ball back on downs. It's an excellent job right there defensively by number 16, John Smith, the six, breaking that ball up, breaking that ball out, and doing a great job. John Smith from Oklahoma with a freshman. In a tough spot with Cook on the sidelines injured. Smith, the next guy up, playing big on Chad Hunter. And Howard has the football back on downs. 2.15 to go here, third quarter. 28-17 lead. Howard trying to end FAMU's five-game win streak and give them their first loss in conference play. Newton to Anthony. Anthony with the grab. And an eight-yard pickup. Be a second, second and short. It's forward where he caught the football. Be about second and one, so a nine-yard pickup. Well, this is the type of down the distance in play and point in the game where you want to take that deep shot downfield, that home run ball, that knockout blow, so to speak. Second and one, Parson has the first down. Across the 45-yard line, down to the 44. First down for the Howard Bison. Coach London was disappointed with his team last week, a loss on homecoming against South Carolina State, but the team looks a lot different this week, especially with Jaquez Ezzard out on the field. The offense is back to the way it was, the top offense in the MEAC. Newton, the pitch to Alley. Out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Even the crowd is more into it this week as opposed to last. Remember, we noted on the broadcast that the crowd just seemed to be waiting for something to happen, and they were taken out of that ball game early by South Carolina State. Not as many Howard fans here this week as there was last week, but this week this crowd is very vocal and a lot of fans on the opposite side. So very impressed with the FAMU following. A lot of Rattler fans here in Washington, D.C. this weekend. Parson with the carry. Very close to the third down, or to the first down. It'll be a third and short for Howard after the Parson run. Now you're starting to see Howard lean on his defensive front of FAMU. Something that we didn't see earlier in the ball game, but this is why you continue to run the football. You, you wear down the defense, you wear down this clock as we get under a minute left in this quarter. Seven of 13 on third downs. Third and two. Parson depends on the spot. He's going to be short. Fourth down coming up. Fourth and it uh, looks like he might have even lost a yard. So fourth and two, fourth and three coming up for Coach London squad. Great run blitz call right here. Guy slanting inside, setting the edge on the corners and allowing that free defender to make the play. So you're starting to see the, the coaching chess match go back and forth between offensive and defensive coordinators. It's going to be the final play of the third quarter. We're heading to the fourth quarter with a fourth down coming up for the Howard Bison. We take a 28-17 lead into the fourth quarter over the Rattlers. 99 a month for two years. Plus, get DVR service free for a year. Click, call, or visit a store today. First Saturday in November, a beautiful sunny 57 degrees. Howard University Green Stadium. Fourth quarter, fourth down. Newton. Fires incomplete. Looking for Ezer. Turnover on downs. So back to back turnover on downs. One for FAMU, now one for Howard. So the defense is making things difficult here late in this game. A lot riding on this game. 
FAMU undefeated in MEAC play. Looking to clinch an invite to the Celebration Bowl. If they would happen to lose, next week they play South Carolina State, which is a non-conference game. And then their final conference game would be against Bethune-Cookman. They haven't beaten Bethune-Cookman in a while. That's not a big game. That's the Florida Classic. So That's in two weeks. So that would be their next conference game. But, of course, they have the tiebreaker over North Carolina A&T because they beat them head-to-head. -head. First and 10, 37. The Bishop, Bishop Bonnet, what a great run, bouncing off of two tackles into Bison territory. And a 28-yard pickup by Bishop Bonnet. This is a different level of speed right there by Bishop Bonnet. You see him bounce off a defender and just keep on trucking right there. What a run by Bonnet. Staley. Incomplete. There's a penalty marker down on the coverage. We haven't seen much pass interference calls today in this ball game, and, and that one, okay, pass I can understand. Defense, number 27, 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic, first down. I think what happened is when you look at the guy's hand fighting, he kind of impeded his progress. You see right there, didn't turn around and look back for the ball, so that's an easy call for the refs. Aaron Walker called with the uh, pass interference, covering Ray. We're fortunate to have Ray back in the game. Had that touchdown catch and was injured on the touchdown play in the first half. As Jeff reported on, worked his way back into the game. So after the pass interference call, first and 10 for FAMU from the Bison 39-yard line. Trailing 28-17. Bonnet on the run to the 20-yard line. Love the entire power play right there because they had Bishop Bonnet, who's 5'65", running right behind their freshman tight end, Barrow White, 6'2", 255. He was leading him into the hole and was able to clear out a lane for him to squirt right through. I want no parts of Mr. White. He's a big boy. <laughs> He's coming around with all that momentum, man. And if you're a linebacker, you got to decide, do I try to take him on the inside? Do I try to take him on the outside, set the edge? Tough decision to make in about half a second. Second and seven. This time Smith. Smith out of the 10-yard line. You want to know why family was doing a great job this season? Watch the effort by Ryan Stanley and the receivers on the perimeter. Getting blocks. You're going to see Stanley get up and lead out that way and get a block right here. Boom, one block. Receiver get up off the ground, get another block. That's team offense right there. I like seeing that from guys on the perimeter. You used to do that, Brett Favre. You used to give me a heart attack as a Packer fan. I don't want any part of him blocking. Stanley coming back. A little misconfusion confusion there on that first down play. Stanley was fortunate enough to fall on. Yeah, Brett Favre used to do that a lot. And you see right here just an ill advised snap. Wasn't ready for it. It's a lost play here for FAMU. Second and 14. Ball on the 15-yard line. So in the second half, every time they've had Ray in the game, they try to get him the football. Let's see if they try it again here on the second and long. Bishop Bonnet next to Stanley in the backfield. Looking for Ray. The ball was batted away and almost picked off. Tight coverage as he was trying to squeeze it into Ray. Great coverage, and on the deflection, it was almost intercepted. When you're predictable, it allows you as a defender to then take chances and, and gamble. And again, like I just mentioned, every time Ray has been in the game, he tried to get him the football. Great job defensively by the defensive back. They've been playing exceptionally well. Again, Rise out Dowling, the defensive backs coach, has done a great job coaching up his, his, his uh, group. Murray was there to deflect it. Crowd at Green Stadium gets behind their Bison with a big third and 14 from the 15-yard line. Stanley goes to the end zone. Touchdown, Rattlers! Xavier Smith with the touchdown grab. Both defenders ran into one another in the end zone, which allowed him to be open uh, in, the back, in the back of the end zone. You see right here, Stanley doing a great job buying time. Two defenders in the same area on one guy, and they run into each other. That's just questionable coverage right there by Howard, but got to love Stanley to, to not be flushed because of the pressure, set his feet, found a guy downfield and made a throw. 
Stanley now 15 touchdowns on the season, two in this game. Smith, that's his fourth touchdown reception of the season. They're going for two. Stanley to the corner, looking for Hunter. Two-point conversion is unsuccessful. So with 12, 14, 44 to go, fourth quarter, things are tightening up here in Washington. The Bison hold on to a 28-23 lead after the touchdown by Smith. Watching MEAC football on the Sports Fever television network. Things tightening up here at Howard University, Green Stadium. Six play, 63-yard drive for FAMU. Took 2.10 off the clock. Ryan Stanley, 15-yard touchdown to Xavier Smith. 12.44 remains, fourth quarter. Let's head down to the field for an injury update. Jeff Jezeski. Jeff? Well, guys, we saw just how important Brian Cook is to this Howard defense on that last drive in which Florida a and moved the ball right down the field and scored. Emery's observations were correct. The shoulder pads are off. He is now in shoes and not cleats anymore. He's done for the game. A right ankle injury for Brian Cook. He said he got rolled up on and twisted it on a play in the Florida a and backfield. So this Howard team is going to have to win this one without Brian Cook the rest of the way. Thank you, Jeff. Put some more pressure on the next guy up. Cook is down there on the sideline, coaching up his defensive back group. First and 10 from the 25 for the Howard offense. Parson, explosive 15-yard run. And a first down run for Parson on the first down carry. Pick up a 15 yards. I just really like the way he runs the football, man. It's decisive, but explosive. He's able to make moves going downhill. He has a good bit of acceleration. It's a phenomenal football player. First and 10 for the 42. Newton, completion to Anthony. Anthony run after catch is so good. Into Rattler territory and another first down. And a 14-yard pickup. Short pass from... Newton to Anthony. Anthony did the rest run after catch. Two big chunk plays right there from, for Howard on his drive. He puts him in great position to put points up on the board. 12 minutes to go, fourth quarter. The Bison holding on to a 28-23 lead. Parson doesn't have it. Newton keeps it. Pulled it right out of Parson's belly. Newton with a five-yard pickup and a second and five coming up. He's so good at doing that. Just when you think Parson has it, he really disguises you don't know who has it and he's a powerful runner man he's able to, to get low and just drive through arm tackles and you know, run through linebackers it's a tremendous run Newton was leading the way rushing the football until the emergence of Dietrich Parson who's now the leading rusher on the team but for the last six weeks or so Newton was the leading rusher on this team and that just helps out their offense as a whole because again when you have a mobile quarterback it makes it an 11 on 11 game but when he's not the focal point of your running game everything else opens up and allows him to take advantage of, of being at the 11th guy by buying time in the pocket and getting outside and making that free safety have to account for him. third and three seven of 13 on third downs for the Bison Newton the pitch to Ali Ali's second effort might have got him very close to the first down marker, but I believe he's going to be short. Depends on the spot, and it's going to be short. Fourth down coming up. Ali gave a great second effort, but wasn't able to get the first down. Take a look at it again. Love what they did because they had the corner peel off the, the edge and fly up and run support. So it looked as if he had a wide open lane, but the corner just passed the receiver off to the safety, flew up and run support, and got a great stop and made it fourth and two. Two of three on fourth downs. Fourth down here for the Bison. Newton with the pitch. First down and a whole lot more for Parson. Down to the 10-yard line, Dietrich Parson, the walk-on sophomore from Philadelphia with a huge run there. Sometimes you gamble, you come up snake eyes. They gambled right there. They played the dive and the quarterback. They didn't play the pitch. The pitch man was open, and that's where he found the lane and put them in position inside the 10-yard line. Outstanding play right there by Dedrick Parson. Parson over 100 yards rushing now for the Bison. First and goal from the nine. Parson again. 
gets back to the line of scrimmage. Second and goal from the nine coming up for Howard. Trying to increase their lead. 28-13 over Florida A&M, who's Rattlers riding a five-game win streak. Got 101 at the top of the screen. Second and goal. Football's on the turf. Parson was able to come up with it, though. It took a good bounce off the turf and came right up. That would have been a turnover. So a fortunate play there for the Howard Bison. The third down coming up. It's a big play right here for Howard. They have to get a touchdown to put a lot of pressure on family. But that ball, like you said, generous bounce, fortunate bounce, I'm sorry, bounced the route right in his hands. FAMU needs to stop here to, to hold any kind of hope to, to really get back into this ball game as far as getting a lead in this ball game is concerned. Third and goal from the 10. Ali in motion. Fade route. End zone. Incomplete. Great coverage knocked away. It's a heck of a job right there by Eric Smith, the corner. Another freshman. We've seen so many freshmen, sophomores, Richard freshmen step up big today for both teams. You see right here, just playing a receiver's hands, standing in phase, and Smith going up and batting that ball away. The uh, freshman from Miami, Florida, Norland High School. Looking for Ezard, of course. That's the go-to guy at that point. Joseph on. With a 26-yard field goal attempt. And the kick is up, and the 26-yarder by Joseph is good. Howard increases their lead, 31-23, 8.25 to go. The onion straws and our campfire mayo, one of our mouth-watering burgers starting at just $6.99 anytime and always served with free bottomless steak fries. Red Robin. Yum. Howard 10 play, 65-yard drive, took 419 off the clock. Joseph with a 24-yard field goal. 31-23 lead for the Howard Bison. It's been a fantastic game. A lot of the big playmakers. Of course, these two teams, one and two in offense in the MEAC. Two of the top quarterbacks in the MEAC on display as well today. Smith on the return. Out of bounds into the Howard sideline. When you want barbecue taste you remember from home, go to D-City Smokehouse. Dry rub, brisket, and more. Smoke for 18 hours. D-City Smokehouse can handle all your events needs. From serving VIP guests of Howard Athletics to serving VIP guests in your own home. D-City Smokehouse, located on 203 Florida Avenue Northwest, three blocks from the historic Howard Theater. D-City Smokehouse, proud sponsor of Howard University Athletics. 8.18 to go, 31-23, our first game of a MEAC doubleheader on the Sports Fever Television Network. Coming up at 4 o'clock, Bethune-Cookman and Morgan State. Check your local listings for that game. The good part about FAMU and that defensive stop on the last series is that it's still a one-possession game. You can score a touchdown, go for two. So you don't have to really break anything you want to do offensively from a tendency standpoint. And you can get your ground game going. You can work the short pass like we just saw in that play before you try to take a shot deep down the hill. So they are still in play with what they want to do offensively. Short pass to Ray. Goes for two yards. Second and eight. Stanley going deep. Has a receiver. But over his head, Marcus Williams would have had a touchdown if Stanley could have put it in his arms. No safety back deep. They ran the post corner post. See him just lean into it a little bit and just missed him. One of the injured linemen down on the field for FAMU. It's like a cramp. You have the big boys cramping up. This late in the season, that's a problem. Coach, look at him like I told you to, to hydrate. An injured player down on the field. 7.45 to go, and Howard trying to give FAMU their first conference loss of the season. 
Howard Athletics would like to welcome its newest sponsor, Half Smoke DC, located minutes away from campus at 651 Florida Avenue Northwest. Their slogan at Half Smoke, you know what it is, Emory Hunt. Don't grow <laughs> up. It's a trap. Half Smoke, proud sponsor of Howard University Athletics. You know what else is a trap? Playing the Colgate Raiders. Right now they're up 41-0 over Fordham. This would mark their fifth shutout of the season, which could have been seven teams scoring 10-3. and three. They've only averaged two points a game. Now the Patriot League, defensively, they are dynamite. Check you all throwing that one out there. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> third and eight from the 36. Big third down for FAMU. Stanley has the completion. What a great catch at the 48-yard line. Enough for a first down. Excellent grab by Xavier Smith, who has the touchdown in this second half. That was a huge catch by Smith to hold on to that football. You can't over or overstate how important of a catch that was because he got hit as the ball got there not only did he take a hit Ryan Stanley took a hit in the pocket and that was a crucial conversion needed by FAMU good job offensively by both guys after that huge catch by Smith first and 10 from the 48 for the Rattlers Stanley has the completion to Ray in Howard territory out at the 48 yard line Ray has been a big time player so far in this ball game. Been very impressed with how he has uh, conducted himself as far as playing is concerned. We've seen him play wide receiver, running back, wildcat quarterback. He's been all over for FAMU. Four catches and a touchdown for Ray. Second and six. Give to Smith. Dodges Ford. Third down coming up the 46 yard line they're obviously in four down territory so you're going to see a play here that's not going to be too aggressive but one that can get them in a position to where if you don't get it on third down they go for it on fourth and short five and tw five for 12 on third downs Howard showing pressure Stanley quick release over the head of his attended receiver Williams on the far side and Stanley just got it out of his hands too quick and too powerful that ball went flying out of bounds and you saw the receiver work back trying to help out his QB it was a stop route the ball just went way over his head out of bounds of course Howard playing without their leading corner Brian Cook who was injured on the sidelines Stanley has thrown the ball 31 times. 19 of 31. Fourth and four. Big catch, White. First down for FAMU. Was that a huge play or what? He went up like a rebound, like Shaq went up and, and snatched that ball out of the air. I thought that was just a great play defensively by Howard. Getting there at the same time as the football, but just excellent hands right there by their big tight end, Varel White. We, we've talked about him all game long. He stepped up and made some big time receptions in this ball game for the Rattlers. White's a guy that has made two big grabs in this game, and White goes in motion with a first and 10 from the 32. Stanley throws it, threw it into double coverage and incomplete. Smith looking for a pass interference call, but it's not going to get it. Can't be too aggressive if you're Ryan Stanley. I understand you want to take advantage of Howard being without Brian Cook, but you're throwing in between three defenders, and he's well covered, too. So there was no window to fit that football in. He has to be careful here because they still have good field position. They can run the ball. They can find other easier completions to move this ball down the field. 5.27 to go in the game, fourth quarter, second and 10 from the 32. Stanley, incomplete, looking for White. Overthrew him. Stanley got hit after he threw the football. Had to get rid of it quickly. It's probably what calls it to be a little bit of a rocket shot coming out of his arm uh, because of how he was pressured on this play. You see right here, just getting rid of the football. 
Hudson, Good job by the defender. Hudson bringing the pressure on Stanley. Third and ten. Five of 13 on third downs for the Rattler offense. They had a couple of big third down conversions on this drive. They need another one here. Completion to Ray. Going to be short. Fourth down coming up. Strong job defensively right there by Howard, making sure Ray didn't get his traction because he was kind of stumbling out that reception. And Howard did a great job keeping them stumbling and bringing them down to the ground. Ray with his fifth catch, but a fourth and five coming up for the Rattlers. The Bison 27 yard line. Two of three on fourth downs for FAMU. The Rattlers are going to need a timeout to talk about this fourth and five from the 27. Coach Simmons wants to talk about it. We'll step aside. Fourth and five coming up for FAMU when we get back. Product in one device. It's pretty amazing. Back at Green Stadium, fourth and five for FAMU. Down 31-23. And the Bison 27-yard line. Stanley has the completion to Hunter and the first down. Big fourth down conversion there by the Rattlers. Pivot route is undefeated in football when we have a hinge of a guy down the field. So FAMU three of four on fourth downs. And they lead the MIAC on fourth downs this season. Converting an injured Howard player after the first down grab by Hunter. Hunter with four catches. Aaron Walker, the injured Howard Bison from the defensive back position. Of course, they already lost Brian Cook for this game with an injury. Walker is a local kid, too, from Friendship Collegiate. Uh, that's a very strong program here in D.C. First and ten for FAMU. The Bison's 17-yard line after that big fourth down conversion. Stanley to Hunter. Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Tire your left side of the line. Five-yard penalty. <laughs> First down. Did he just say the entire left side of the line? Sometimes you got to call it like you see it, man. <laughs> <laughs> penalty number eight on the game for FAMU. Eight penalties for FAMU, four for Howard. Stanley to the end zone. Intercepted. Picked off by the Bison. It's an ill-advised score right there by Stanley. He's a veteran. He understands. He shouldn't have made that throw. That's a tough decision to do in this ball game of this magnitude. But a great job by Howard coming away with the turnover. Jalen Smith with the interception. Now two on the season for the freshman from Virginia. Yeah. Look at the hit Stanley took. Got hit by Robinson. Not and only do you lose possession, but you also lose an opportunity to put points up on the board. He was looking for Williams in the end zone and... Jalen Smith with his second pick. The freshman coming up big. You saw Stanley's reaction as he pounded two fists onto the turf. Newton and the Bison have the ball back. Well, it's going to be up to FAMU's defense now to get a stop and get the ball back with under four minutes to play. But if you're Howard, you're sitting in the catbird seat now. You've had success running the football behind this big offensive line. You have a stable of backs that you're able to keep fresh and healthy and you have one of the, the x-factors in this ball game and quarterback Kalen Newton running the football as well so they can do exactly what they've done and still be in good in a good position to close out this game Parson with his second 
100 yard rushing game of the season. He also went for 148 in the win over Morgan State. Over 100 yards here today. Had eight yards in that first down carry. Trying to get the first down on the second down carry and he's back to the line of scrimmage. And this Parson 148 yards today. Emory. And this is where those timeouts that were used in the second half by Coach Simmons will come into play because I believe they only have one left. That's correct. One timeout. So you're really hoping your defense can get a stop here because if, if they convert this, it's all but over for the Rattlers. 2.50 to go. Clock running and a 31 23 lead, and only one timeout to go. Newton takes a timeout. Scores around the MEAC. Just started the fourth quarter. North Carolina AT has a 27 20 lead over Norfolk State. Just starting the third quarter, Delaware State with a 13-0 uh, lead over Savannah State, trying to make it back-to-back -back wins for Delaware State. And third quarter score, North Carolina Central with a 24-0 lead over Edward Waters. Shout out to Coach Milstead, Rod Milstead, the new head coach at Delaware State. Got those guys playing good football, which should set them up for a pretty good 2019 season. Yeah, back-to-back -back wins if they hold on to win this one and we'll have them next week in Baltimore for our final MIA college football game of the week next season uh, next week in Baltimore against Morgan State and Delaware State that's our next uh, broadcast next Saturday in our final MIA game of the season fourth down coming up big fourth down with 225 to go and clock ticking and then with just one timeout their five-game win streak in jeopardy here, and they're undefeated in MIAC play also in jeopardy. Fourth and short. Whistles blow before the play, and Howard called a timeout before the snap. 30 seconds. Exactly two minutes to go in this game. 31 23, a fourth and one coming up for the Howard Bison. Coach London. Boy, they hold on to win this game. Last week's game, the opportunity there, if they would have beat South Carolina State, this game would have been even meant more for Howard. Now they're still, you know, still could have an opportunity. Florida AM still pretty much in control of things, but it kind of opens the door a little bit. And you still have that sliver of possibility. Coach London, as I talked to him this week, he said, hey, we can't control, you know, we just got to take care of, we know we got to win. You know, we got a couple games to play. And then, you know, then we'll just be forced to, you know, do some scoreboard watching and see, you know, if there's an upset or one of the other teams could knock off, you know, uh, someone that's above us in the MEAC. Fourth and one. The 29. Going to punt the football. Penalty marker down on the return. There was really no return, just trying to handle the punt. As Ali was the one that was on the tackle. It will be FAMU football at the 35 yard line. We'll have to wait to see what the penalty's about. You got to be smart if you're Ali on that play. At worst, he's going to catch that football, and he's probably going to muff that football. 15 yards from the end of the kick, first down. You don't want to run into him, and now you just gave free a, a free 15 yards to Florida and then putting this football at midfield with just under two minutes left, down by eight. So... It's not the play you want to make if you're on special teams. Not at all. One fifty-two to go. Ball at midfield. The Florida AM down 31-23. Trying to stay unbeaten in the MIAC conference play. 
Stanley to Bishop Bonnet. Tackle for a loss will give him the forward progress back to the original line of scrimmage at midfield. So second and ten coming up for FAMU. Well, you want to see a, a more urgency here for FAMU. Not saying they have to go complete, hurry up and throw all over the field, but you have to move at a better pace than what they're moving at now. Stanley has the completion to Hunter. Hunter with just a short four yard pickup. It's going to bring up a third and six. One oh five to go. Hunter rolls to the right. Incomplete. Looking for Williams. It's a heck of a job right there defensively by Jalen Smith, the freshman out of Virginia Beach. Smith has played big. Both Smiths, Jalen and John Smith, in playing for the injured Brian Cook. It's the game right here if you're Howard. Fourth and six. One minute to go. Howard trying to give Florida A&M their first loss in conference play. Stanley incomplete. Looking for Smith. Smith couldn't hold on. They turn it over on downs with 54 seconds to go. Gotta love the effort though by Xavier Smith on that reception attempt. 5'10", 165, but he extended out, tried to make that grab, but just couldn't haul it in. Over the middle of the field and had his hands on it. Tough catch, but one he normally makes, but credit Howard second there for making that throw even tougher for Ryan Stanley. And shout out to Howard's defense because they are without two key playmakers and they were able to step up, make enough plays to knock off FAMU. Victory formation is in order for Howard, the Bison, get it done. Next week, Norfolk State, and then they finish up at home against Bryant on November 18th. That should be a fun game because of all the potential points that could be scored in that one. So FAMU will now fall to 5-1 and one in MEAC play. Howard goes to 4-2 and two in the MEAC and 4-4 four and four overall. Kempton Hotels, Glover Park, and Carlisle Hotel at DuPont Circle. It's the Kempton way. Enjoy the Kempton perks like hosting evening wine hours and more. You'll feel like you're home away from home when you stay at the Kempton, Clover Park, and Carlisle Hotel on DuPont Circle. Proud sponsors of Howard University Athletics. Don't forget our second game of our MEAC doubleheader. Check your local listings. Mathune Cookman taking on Morgan State. So FAMU could still very much win the MEAC, but they still have some work to do and go to the Celebration Bowl. They have the tiebreaker over North Carolina A&T. North Carolina A&T 3-1 and in conference play, and they were have the lead currently. Game they're playing this afternoon. But still... Mathematically, Howard's still alive, but some things have to happen. It would have been a lot easier if FAMU would have won it here today. But not the case. Howard bounces back from their loss on homecoming. South Carolina State get the big win here today. Newton, 172 yards, two touchdown passes. Diedrich Carson goes over 100 yards rushing today, 149 yards. Kyle Anthony, seven catches, 86 yards. Ezard, three catches for 35 yards, and that great one-handed catch. Howard University gets the win over FAMU, 31-23. For my partner, the czar of the playbook, Emery Hunt. Jeff Szeski down on the sidelines, the entire Sports Fever Television Network crew. I'm Phil Shaner. Have a great day. Howard gets the win on Military Appreciation Day, giving FAMU their first loss in conference play, 31-23.